Okay, at 7 o'clock, I will open tonight's meeting of the Lunenburg Select Board, Tuesday, October 12, 2021. I will ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening everyone. Good evening. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel uh, within 24 hours after the conclusion of the meeting. If you have a smart device, a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet, and wish to participate in the public comment section of the meeting, you can do so using the Zoom application. Tonight's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. If you do not have any of those devices but still wish to participate, you can do so by phone. The number is 888-475-4499. And once again, the webinar ID is 909 909- one seven four zero three four seven. The posted agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Do we have any public comment tonight from the board? None. No. Any public comment from the public? Mr. Beardmore. Good evening, Peter Beardmore. Asking all, I can still recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good evening, Peter Beardmore, 282 Pleasant Street. Um, here this evening in my capacity as chair of the Finance Committee uh, to uh, repeat one announcement and offer another. Uh, the other is that this Thursday, uh, the Finance Committee will be holding its public hearing on the articles that uh, will appear on the warrant this year. Uh, this is part of our duties as prescribed by the Charter. Um, we will uh, hear an overview uh, of all of the articles, a presentation, I would imagine, on some, and the public will be uh, invited to ask questions and comment on any and all articles. The public, uh, uh, the, the public forum is then closed, uh, the hearing is then closed, and the Finance Committee uh, will then have the opportunity to vote recommendations on each article. Um, our options are to recommend to approve, uh, to recommend to disapprove, uh, to find no financial impact, uh, or to defer to town meeting. Uh, the first three of those options, should we choose them at the public hearing, will be printed in the warrant, which will go out to all the citizens in the town. Uh, so I would invite any members of the public who are interested in participating in the public hearing to do so this Thursday at 7 p.m. right here uh, or on Zoom, which uh, the, uh, the link of which is, is published on the town website, on the town calendar. The other event that I, I want to uh, just state again, uh, for those of you who might not have heard, heard my first uh, invitation, is that on the 28th of this month, the Finance Committee will be uh, hosting a, a joint meeting with the school committee uh, and a represent, representative from the Mass Association of School Committees will, will be discussing Chapter 70 funding, uh, which is our local aid uh, for education funding, um, and uh, getting an overview on, on Lunenburg's situation with respect to Chapter 70. And as I've, I've articulated here before, it's, uh, we've been relatively flat the last couple of years, and we're, we're looking for some explanation and advice uh, in terms of what we can do there. Um, I have reached out to the members of our legislative delegation and all three have uh, responded <coughs> back with their uh, intent to participate. I think two members will be here live and, and one will be remote. Um, but again, members of the public will be uh, invited also uh, to ask questions uh, and participate on a, on a limited basis, but it's a good opportunity uh, to hear what we hear while we hear it uh, and to let our legislators know what an important issue this is. Thank you very much. Before you go, I just yes, want sir. to make sure that the 
the public hearing this Thursday is full participation in person or Zoom? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes. You. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I did have one question. You may have <laughs> said, said it and I may have missed it. The meeting on the 28th, what's the time on that? It's at 7 p.m. It's so, our regularly scheduled finance committee meeting, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll be holding it jointly with the school committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment from the public? Any announcements, Madam Town Manager? None. I do have one announcement. Uh, making its way across many, many pages on social media today was a lot of public officials who are alerting the public. If you have, as most of us in Lunenburg and Townsend and Fitchburg and Ashby have, the fabulous luxury of being provided electricity by Unitil, they have filed with the DPU for a, uh, a I don't want to say a rate increase per se, but it's a difference in how they are going to be able to do the residential fixed basic service rate when it comes to uh, the, I'm trying to think of the part of the bill that, is, that it is. It's electricity the, supply. Supply, right, thank you, electricity supply. That will, if, if requested, if allowed by their request, would raise the rates of, according to their own document, will, the average monthly bill will see an increase of $61.96 a month or 37.9%. So they are asking people to file comments online or, or written by mail. And all of us are suggesting to the public that if this is not sitting well with you, that you provide such written comment while the period is open. Uh, it is open until the comment period, I think, is next Monday, October 18th, 2021. So if you're going to mail it in, probably should have mailed it yesterday. Uh, but if you're going to do it online, you can do it until that date. Um, for those people in Lunenburg, because this is the electric supply and we are part of a, um, a cooperative municipal in aggregation in our town, we have secured for the town a three year rate instead of the 19.88 cents per kilowatt hour that Unitil is requesting be okayed. We have one that's 11 cents, so eight, almost, you know, almost a half the price. And we have secured that rate for three years. Yes. So if you are a resident of Lunenburg and you have not opted out of that, you will be getting that and you will not be subject to this increase. But if you have opted out of the aggregation, we highly recommend that you opt back in and all of that's done through Unitil so that this would not affect you. Uh, so I just wanted to make that announcement. And again, all the public officials, state and local, are putting this on their Facebook page. I shared it as well today, as well as uh, our state representatives and some city councilors in, in Fitchburg, and I'm sure it's going to be on more and more pages. We just received this yesterday. I have more in my report. Do you want me to address that now? Sure. Okay. Sure. So um, this, as Chairman Alonzo stated this rate was filed with the DPU for comment. The Attorney General has already provided comments um, on this rate increase. They are asking this be reduced, the rate increase be reduced by 50%. Um, so, but no determination has been made yet by DPU. Our municipal um, and community service representative, John DiNapoli, reached out to me to um, offer working with the town to contact all the customers that currently have opted out of the municipal aggregation program to send them notifications that they can still opt in at any time. So we will be working with them on that. Yeah. It was good foresight mm -hmm. for those people who brought that municipal aggregation up for Lunenburg to allow us to have that. We've had that for many years now, but this is a great example of why. So. Okay, 705, we have a common victualler license hearing for AJD's Cafe LLC doing business as Lunenburg Diner at 324 Electric Ave number three. 
Are they present? If you would come, a oh, representative, you, you can both come up, or one of you, or at least one of you, hopefully. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening. How are you? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing very well. My name is Arthur Dragoslis. It's my wife, Judith. Two crazy grandparents that decided to move back to this area from Florida. <laughs> uh, well, it's a reverse commute. So <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, glad to be here, and uh, we're currently building a house in Lunenburg at 971 Northfield Road, so which is across from Saddler's Crossing. Mm -hmm. Welcome and to town. Thank you. Yeah. So we decided, to, we moved here for personal reasons for our parents and stuff like that, which since then has pa have passed, we lived and we lived in the area before. So, And we saw the opportunity to open up a diner uh, in the previous Whalem kitchen. Previous before that, I believe it was the ugly omelet, and being so close to our house and seeing the need for something like that in the area, we decided to invest. So we're asking the board for a VIC license. Uh, experience of over 40 years in the food industry and the entertainment industry, having to entertain a lot of drunk people in the bar business in Florida, <laughs> which we're not doing that anymore, obviously. So. Uh, we're asking the board for permission and uh, approval of the VIC license. I will open it up to the board for questions if they have any. No questions. Uh, just talk a little bit for the people. I mean, most people are familiar with the Ugly Omelet in Whalem Kitchen. <coughs> talk a little bit about your, what your hours will be. Hours will be uh, Monday through Saturday from 6.30 to 2.30 and uh, Sunday from 6.30 till 1.30, seven days a week. Hoping to employ about 20 to 25 people. Uh, we had the privilege of uh, having a lot of young kids, high schoolers, actually looking for jobs on Saturday and Sunday, obviously because they're going to school from Monday through Friday, which is something positive in this time of age because everybody says, well, nobody wants a job, nobody wants a job. That's not true, there's a lot of young kids you know, that are, now I don't know if they're being forced by the parents to get a job, but, you know, I, I'm here to tell you that they do come and apply, so, which is a great thing. So, and we're planning to uh, employ some of those young kids uh, as either bussers or dishwashers or, or waiters and waitresses and so on and so forth. So the hours lead, lead me to believe, obviously, it's very similar to what it was, a, a breakfast and lunch. Break. Breakfast and lunch, yep. yes. Good. Uh, everything checked out. And obviously, we're looking forward to uh, being serviced by you until two, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no better joy. Almost <laughs> so, uh, across the street. As a 23-year rate payer, no better joy. <laughs> yes. Uh, but looking forward to another breakfast place. It's, it's been. I don't sad. think there is another breakfast place. That's there the is, other thing. There is. There's Which one? one place, but in, Stella's yeah. is the only one that we have here in town. Right. I don't think the six of you can fit in there. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was a shame when when the the pandemic, you know, Absolutely. caused the close of Whalem. So, and as yeah. I as I went to drop off my car across the street, I saw the sign, and I'm like, oh, I thought that's where it was going to go. I wasn't sure. Correct. So now I know. Correct. Les is a good garage too. He's a good guy. When are you looking to open? Probably the end of this month or beginning of the of the month. We November first, I think, is our our targeted time. Uh, we'll see whether we can do it the weekend before that. So. Good. That's what we're looking for. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, well, I think this is an exciting opportunity. I'm always looking for a breakfast joint, usually one day a week at least. So yeah. it would be exciting to have something that's a little closer. You'll be absolutely flabbergasted by what you're going to see on the menu. Okay. Well, something that you, there's nothing around here. So Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, what is your intention long term with uh, selling mimosas and, and alcohol? There is, we don't sell mimosas or alcohol. Yeah. We can sell N.A. mimosas and N.A. vermosas, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, no, but I, I imagine Not I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. So no, basically I, you take or orange juice and a little Perrier and you put it in there and you think that you're drinking a mimosa, uh, but it's not. Interesting. Okay? Yeah, I, I, I got that it was non-alcoholic, but I didn't know Correct. how you would yeah. do that. Yeah. I usually go for the alcoholic drinks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, I think it's a great thing for you to mention about the uh, employment for students. Do you have an estimate at this point about approximately how many students you plan on employing? So far, we've had about what, four about or five? Five, five, five yeah. or five so far. Four or five. All right, and uh, I would imagine that there you're, you'll probably have some uh, some members of the senior community probably looking for part-time work as well. Um, you know, that would be a great opportunity for many Absolutely. people. So I wholeheartedly support what you're trying to do. Uh, that was my only question. I will tell you that my biggest concern of doing this, because this is kind of crazy to open up or invest in a business at, in this environment, COVID and everything else, uncertainty, um, product acquisition. I mean, we cannot get products. I mean, we had companies that we applied, like Cisco, they're saying, sorry, we're not taking new accounts. We cannot service you. Oh, wow. So we don't have product coming in. And truly, even me, when I go to you know, big warehouses like Restaurant Depot, Andover, or Milford, empty. Shelves are empty. Mm -hmm. So there is a crisis going on. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned at the beginning, two crazy grandparents moving from Florida to Massachusetts. So well, we like to pride ourselves on being a uh, farming community. Yeah. And so there, I think that there, you know, as you're looking at product, uh, you know, there aren't really- I'm a son of a farmer. Good. good. I yeah. grew up in a farm. There aren't any farm-to-table uh, breakfast restaurants that I'm aware of anywhere nearby. So, you know, not telling you how to run your business, but saying that there's probably some opportunity there to Absolutely. work with our farming community. It's very and good And that to would know. be a huge benefit to the town. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you. Anybody Thank you. Else? You're welcome. Yeah, th this, is, this is great. Uh, and and I, well, I wish you well. I wish you well. Um, uh, and I hope that uh, you can overcome the challenges of the supply side, but uh, I plan on helping out on the demand side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. I'll just say that breakfast is my favorite meal of the day, so I very much look forward it's to it. the most guys. important one, too, right? That's right. There you go. That's right. All right. You're the right personality for this business. I appreciate it. I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. You made the point three times, so I'm coming in just to see the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have food, but I'm coming in for the crazy. If I have my six times. grandchildren with me, you're going to see a lot of craziness there. <laughs> I would entertain a motion on the request for the common victual license for AJD's Cafe LLC, doing business as Lunenburg Diner, 324 Electric Ave, number three. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Well, thank you. Best Congratulations. Of Best of Take luck. Care. Look, I'll look doing? forward to the, uh, put, it, put an ad in the Lunenburg Ledger when you're opening. We are. We were waiting for the license actually to come through before. We, ha we have the website and everything else. It's just that we're waiting for this to, to, okay. to be properly done. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck. All right. 710, another common virtual license hearing for BKK Group LLC doing business as Bangkok Hill, 177 Mass Ave. Good evening. Robert Bowen, 1686 Mass Ave for BKK Group LLC, doing business as Bangkok Hill. Uh, the Bangkok Hill is changing hands. The, the new owners are here. Manrod, can you stand up? Manrod and Natalie. And we are looking for a common VIC license. Okay. Any Essentially, the operation is not going to change. Okay, that's what I was. That was my first question. Well, there there is one change. For the time being, they're not going to have alcohol, so they're going to be turning in their liquor license. They may get one somewhere down the road. Okay. Otherwise, everything's the same. Yes. They're not currently serving indoors, they're just takeout right now. Okay. I just wanted to make the point, if they let their liquor license lapse, they didn't have to go through the, just so they're aware, the whole process, like it's a new license again. Yeah. Okay. Is this beer and wine, Rob, or? I believe it's just beer and wine. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Good. Look good. Are they planning on going through the, are they, in the future, is it in their head, in their minds that they're going to go through that process? 
to get the alcohol license? They are probably going to. We're starting an application now. I, th I think it's just going to be beer and wine. Okay. Okay. Uh, everything checked out yes. with all the background checks and taxes. Mm -hmm. I would open it up to the board if anybody has any questions. No questions? None. No. Yeah, uh, I just have a couple, not many. <laughs> First, good to see you, Mr. Bowen. Good to be seen. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a little while. Um, are the owners intending to operate it themselves? Yes. Okay, so it'll be owner operated? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's very straightforward. I, I've enjoyed going to Bangkok Hill, so I look forward to going to it with uh, under new management and ownership. Indeed. Okay. If there are no other questions, uh, it seems like a very straightforward transaction here. Uh, I would entertain a motion regarding the request for a common VIC license from the BKK Group LLC doing business as Bangkok Hill 177 Mass Ave. So moved. Second. I should point out when I say I uh, entertain a motion that. I didn't say approve, but I'm going to assume you mean yes. approve. Yes. Yeah, no, I did notice that. Okay. Yes. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Good luck. Excellent. I wish you continued success there for the, for the business. Do we need to physically turn over that license to you? No. So um, the executive assistant will send out renewal packages. Okay. So if they choose not to renew, that will be noted in what we submit to ABCC. Okay. Is that, Thank you very much. You mean, is that what you meant, the liquor license? The liquor license, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, 715. We're not catching up, but we're not falling further behind. We have a meeting with the Public Access Cable Committee Chairman regarding letters to legislators about pending bills on the streaming video over public rights of way, which I'm assuming that sentence, while all easy words in and of itself, you will explain to us. That's what my seven pages are to do. Okay, well, I'm going to sit back. Go ahead. <laughs> which, uh, I will try and do in nine minutes. <laughs> so, there's a bill to establish a comprehensive statewide policy concerning compensation for the use of digital infrastructure in the public right of way. There are two versions. They're presently in committee. The House one is 130, Senate 2200. I ask you to hold there. We all had that in our Google Drive. You could review the packets. Okay. A little bit of history. The Cable Act of 1984, which was uh, a while ago, uh, a municipality such as us can negotiate a franchise fee from the cable company for use of public rights of way. Uh, which is what we've been doing for a few years. And we have a contract right now with uh, Comcast for our public cable access. Uh, it's typically done every 10 years, and we presently get a 5% fee uh, on video services that are provided over the cable. Well, the monies are restricted for use in the provision of public education and government services over. We presently have three channels, which we have brought the third one up, so we're doing public channel, education channel, and a government channel. Um, a capital infusion may also be negotiated, and we got $170,000, which we're holding in reserve for when we get our new space, which I hope will happen soon. Uh, video services, what's happening? Video services are moving to the internet as streaming video. As such, they are not accounted in the gross video revenues. So as people are doing that, uh, the amount we may end up with will start to drop. Uh, further, people are doing what's called cable cutting, which you may have heard of, which really means they stop direct video channels, instead use the internet portion of the cable bandwidth for streaming. So if I'm a regular cable su subscriber here in uh, Lunenburg, uh, Comcast can provide, as an ISP, an internet service provider and video service provider. I can kill all my uh, regular channels off Comcast, save money that way, 
and move them pretty much all to the internet, which means they're not accounted for. This uh, is still using the same infrastructure and the same rights of way, but the uh, Cable Act of 84 wasn't structured to expect that. I have no idea why they didn't realize this was going to happen. So, uh, What the bill does is it uh, imposes a statewide franchise fee on the use of public rights of way for streaming services. Such fees will be collected by the state rather than the municipality. So we wouldn't have to individually negotiate with a cable company and every other town and village and hamlet around do the same thing. Uh, such fees will be collected by the state and placed in a streaming entertainment fund and would then be dispersed. So 20% of these fees would go to the Commonwealth, 40% would go to uh, municipalities such as Lunenburg uh, based on population. So they would, uh, based on the number of people in the town, interestingly it doesn't seem to be based on the number of subscribers, but that's what they've chosen. And 40% would go to the community media cent uh, centre, uh, being PAC, public access cable, uh, in this case, uh, again based on population. Uh, the impacts on PAC. Cable cutting will reduce fees to run public access cable here in Lunenburg. By the way, that's what we're using right now. Um, the, uh, we presently get about $200,000 per year in franchise fees. Uh, we've seen a slight reduction in income at this point. Uh, other media centers uh, around seem to have uh, taken a bigger hit than we have. Um, unfortunately, all of this is distorted by COVID because people lost their jobs, uh, but people also are spending more time at home. So one might have raised the video, one may have uh, reduced it. Um, so we can't really predict how this is going to behave, but it's reasonable to presume that the way we're structured at the moment uh, the fees will start going down. Um, this bill would help reduce or eliminate the loss of operating revenue and would also provide some revenue to the Lunenburg General Fund. Um, the re action being requested by PAC is uh, based on Mass Access, which is an organization of public access centers in Massachusetts, uh, has sent out, and I believe you should have copies uh, of a model letter that you can send uh, as a board on behalf of uh, Lunenburg can send in uh, to the two committees. Uh, there are two separate committees and the two separate letters have the names of the right people to go to and the address to send it to. Um, so they're requesting media centers and municipalities to show support for this bill. Therefore, PAC is requesting the select board does so uh, on behalf of Lunenburg. Um, at the moment, the bills are both in committee. So that's where the letters need to go to, but they're copied. Um, the House Bill, H-130, is sponsored by State Representative Michael Kushmerek. And I got in touch with the Office of State Senator John Cronin uh, sadly, he didn't get in touch with me, so I don't know where he stands on it. Was that nine minutes? I don't know, but it was excellent. <laughs> one of the, I, I do have one question for you that you may or may not know, and it was it, it pertained to <clears throat> the fact that they were going to be giving forty percent to the municipalities, which caused you to uh, comment that it seems to have nothing to do with the subscribers and my my question right. is does this mean it would seem to be if they're not looking at subscribers that that's going to be because it's this streaming video is going to apply to any internet provider which would include let's say Verizon here in town or any other entity and they're going to be collecting it from them even though they don't have any contract with us directly it seems uh, I I'm glad you thought that through because I hadn't gone that far yeah. But as far as I can tell, they collect from the entirety of internet providers using public rights of way right. of the state and then share it out according to their magic algorithm. <laughs> Good thought, though. Thank you. Appreciate no that. Uh, has anybody 
has everybody had a chance to read through these and the sample letters? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a comment, question, or motion in any of those orders? Well, yeah. keep the motion to last if anybody has comments or questions first. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, my, my only comment is thank you for clearing that all up. Now I get it. So, so I'm sorry. Thank you for clearing all of that. Oh, up. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You, I, you, you, you know, you did, it was did the best I could. No, you did. <laughs> Thank you. So, what, did you have a question? No, I don't. <laughs> um, I have a question just about the, and I, I haven't read the bills, so I don't know what the actual wording is there. But I know Comcast isn't going to lose one dollar in profit. So, any any talk about? Uh, you know, distributing more money around, I th to me, sounds like an extra fee on everyone's Comcast bill. So <clears throat> how, how is this fee going to be collected from Comcast? Is, okay. Um, I really can't tell because it, it seems odd in the first place that it's not done by a service provider per town, for instance. Yep. And it seems odd that it's not done based on subscribers. Mm -hmm. um, the payout is done based on population, is my understanding. W would you like a copy of each of the bills? I, I, think, I think it's in our drive. I just haven't read it. The, the other, my other question for you is um, when we start talking about the state taking 20% off the top and then 40% of it going to the general fund of municipalities, that's more than half the money collected now, right. is not going for the current intended purpose, right? Right. And, and, and so in order for there to be, so how much money do you anticipate that this is going to bring in every year compared to what the current arrangement uh, brings in? It's extremely difficult to anticipate the way this whole thing will behave. Um, right now, it's relatively simple. It's on video revenues uh, by Comcast uh, as provided in uh, Lunenburg. Mm -hmm. And there is a a fee in the bill for Lunenburg subscribers that contributes towards that. You're absolutely right. Comcast is unlikely to want a volunteer to give up one dollar. Um, so quite how they're going to make this work, I don't know. But I'm not one of the politicians working on it. I'm one of the people who hope to benefit from it, not suffer from it. So in your correspondence with us, you're, you're stating that you are supporting this. So that, what is that, that support I would assume is based on an anticipating more revenue? Uh, I, I'm trying to mitigate the loss of revenue of the present franchise fee. Okay. It's not quite the same thing as real close. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the, but the details of this aren't, aren't worked out because I mean what you're describing is a current plan in which you know, PACs receiving, you know, 5% of everyone's cable bills. No, just the video service. Just the video service. Thank Not you. the right. internet piece of it, just yes. the video service. So currently PACs receiving 5% of the video service for Lunenburg subscribers. Right. That this bill seeks to change that so that way there's money that goes into a general fund that then gets distributed back out to people. And given that our numbers are like 11,000, yeah. I don't know how... I can, like, just thinking about all this, I don't know how I can see that us, that we as a town could even benefit from such a change unless this amount collected, you know, is at least double what they're currently paying out. Which right, means I understand where customer. you're coming from. Uh, it doesn't uh, change the Cable Act of 84. Uh, this is an addition. So we still get the franchise fee uh, as it starts dropping, which is what we expect. Okay. Um, that's based on 4,000 subscribers, which is approximately what we have in Lunenburg. Uh, the, so this hopefully is one of these that kind of goes like that. Um, I agree with you, uh, but I'm expecting that there will be a far, far more money being spent on internet services um, and therefore feeding into this. Mm -hmm. and uh, are presently on video services. You, you can't get by without the internet anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're correct. I think that just, you know, simple, kind of simple math is if I round up our 40 to right. 50, right? Yeah, no, you're, you're <laughs> so right. To 5,000. If I round up our 4,000 to 5 and round down our population from 11 to 10, yeah. and I'd say in order for the town to receive with this new formula of, what is it, 20, 40% then goes back into... 
pack of the funds yeah. collected. Yeah. So in order for the town to be equal, mm -hmm. we have to see almost a double contribution to the cause. No, 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 no. I think you're missing the point. They're not. They're not eliminating what we existing correct contract is. It is just supplementing it. So as as people cut the cable right. cord and that that revenue that decreases, right. it is assumed by most people that the streaming rev, streaming use will go up and therefore and in the house version it's a 5% assessment of the streaming entertainment operator's gross annual revenues derived from streaming entertainment. So in much in the same way that we're calculating the 5% of the video services from contract, Comcast, the Commonwealth is looking to put 5% on anybody providing streaming services of a certain size. I think the your minimum, you have to be a company that bills more than $250,000, which is basically everybody. Uh, and they'll tax that. So as that goes up and the other one goes down, presumably at least right. it'll equalize. There's right. a hope that it will balance. It's basically difficult to predict, but it's way better than not doing this. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, that, thank you for that clarification, no Mr. Problem. Alonzo. That helps me understand it better. So th those, that was most of my questions. My, I guess my last one is, so when all this goes through, what, what keeps Comcast offering 5%? What, what stops them from saying, we're going to make a deal for 2% now? A well, our present, contract that we, we have, have a 10 year contract. That Steve and uh, I were on that committee uh, with some other people. But, so, yeah, I, I, I negotiated. I, I, I understand that we currently have a 10 year contract. But right. when that expires, we, when I say we, I really mean you guys, because it would go through the select board. Uh, if they say we don't want to pay any franchise fee or uh, don't agree to the draft contract that would be negotiated, we have the ability to pull their license which I believe, if we pull it, includes pulling the internet access, right? Not sure on that one. No, I think it's just the telecommunication. Just the... Uh, well, it's the cable just the, system. Just the cable services. So that's... No, no, cable video services. Because okay. their license with you're, us you're is for right. cable video services, not yeah. for their internet. And for those people who ask, why isn't Verizon here, for instance, yeah. they could. They could apply for one, but they don't need one to be an internet presence in Lunar right. But to provide yeah. video services directly, mm -hmm. as opposed to indirectly through streaming, Yep. then you have to have a license. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Mr. Chair, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but so essentially Comcast is in the same situation that you would be in, right? So they're not, I mean. The Comcast is what? They're kind of in the same situation uh, with respect to this proposed legislation as you would be, right? They're not gonna, in other words, they're gonna, so cable use is going down and streaming use is going up, right? Yep. So wouldn't they kind of be in the same situation anyway? I mean, this is just to respond to Mike's concern. Um, yeah, but presently we only get paid by use of cable for video services. Mm -hmm. We want to get a fee for uh, the infrastructure use for internet services. And so the two hopefully, as one goes down, the other would go up. Uh, it may, may not be linear. I can't tell that. There may be a jump. There may be a... It also could take five years for this to go through. So but we have, I well, think, this has, six I years mean, left. On the House side, I think if I'm, my math is correct, there's 160 members in the House, uh, the, in the House part of the legislature, and I, I counted, I think I counted 60 co-signers. So it has a huge uh, right. amount of people supporting it. Now, I didn't understand your question, Mr. Marino. You said that they're I, in the same position. Well, in terms of the, you know, in other words, so cable use is going down, right? So Comcast is a cable provider, right? Right. So when cable, when they're kind of in the same boat because cable use will go down, so they're going to lose customers on cable. Right. People are streaming more, right? Right. So now they're going to have to... Um, Jack their internet rates, which they have to compensate for that loss okay. in revenue. <laughs> well, well, not necessarily. Not because necessarily. Again, this is what I'm getting. They have two. They have both. They have their fingers in both pots. Right. That's right. So it should it should equal out. Right. It's not going to cost them presumably more money unless somebody cuts cable and they cut Comcast and they go to another internet provider. But if they cut the cable services and just amp up their streaming in through Comcast Internet, then mm -hmm. this would effectively not have much to do. And I mean, presumably. But again. 
right now, with the way our cable license is and the way all cable licenses in the Commonwealth are, once we negotiate the contract, it's for those video services. Right. So there's a whole arena of existing streaming that has never been ass assessed anything. So I don't, I don't even know what that is. I mean, I don't know that anybody probably in the state house knows what that is. Mm. Um, so there's going to be, it'll be interesting to see what that is because it could be a huge amount. And they're going to say, wait a minute, we're taxing this. Like you're going to make a windfall on this. Well, most, I would presume that most customers who have cable have internet, but we know that there are people with just internet service without right. cable. So their customer base is going to be larger than, That's than exactly what they right. have now. Yeah. That's what so. it's, right. So we actually could see, you know, a, an increase in that. Now, yeah. remember, to Mr. Jeffrey's point about, well, why would they continue to do this? There's been a concerted effort over the past five to maybe more years, maybe seven years for the telecommunicate, the video service providers to negate or cancel that whole telecommunication mm -hmm. act and the act of going to each town and using their legal resources and accounting resources to negotiate with 351 municipalities. And they said, we just want to negotiate one with this, the state and that's it. So they've been trying to get out of doing individual licenses because if you have somebody who's, you know, putting it a stronger push uh, on a, a, a city or a town that's putting more pressure on Comcast and other people, you know, they have very uneven, I'm assuming, contracts. The contracts range from 2.5% and one channel. Right. It's the worst I've heard. Uh, our present one is 5%, which is the maximum, and three channels. Right. We do not have high definition, and there's a lot of discussion going on with that at the moment. The ones I've heard of, who we have a side letter for high definition, uh, but Comcast is asking $30,000 back to put that up. So at the moment, we're not considering it. So for, from, an ent from an entity perspective, entity being PAC, being the town, I understand um, that uh, it's more clear to me now what the benefits to the entities are. What's not so clear to me is the impact on the residents. Um, you know, I don't know how Comcast organizes themselves. I, I would imagine <laughs> that they have multiple divisions, and I would imagine that they have a video division. Oh, yeah. That they have a. Um, I'm sure you're right. Yeah. And, and that and that if they're getting hit on revenue on one side, yeah. they're probably looking at that one side to figure out how to make up for it. So, I mean, I, I don't know how a large corporation, how this is going to be handled, given that it's still in committee. So, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not clear. Is this informational, or are you looking for some kind of support? You're looking for us to. I'm Sign the letter for supporting the two legislation. Two, two letters, one to each committee, please. One in the Senate and one in the That's, House. There's no penalty in doing it that I'm aware of. It may be a benefit. And I would also say, first of all, during all these negotiations, and now this is, we're in our, I believe, third or fourth contract with I Comcast. think it might be the fourth. Yeah, the first one the only had one chance. And at every time that we've talked about it, and, and they fought us hard in this yeah. contract, but we, have, you know, we managed to come to a, a negotiation and an agreement. Everywhere along the line, they said it, and then people, ratepayers said that, oh, you know, it's going to raise the rates, and we're going to see a drop off. And it's never, we've not seen the drop off because of that. And number two, I think a reason we have not seen the drop off, and why I do support these two pieces of legislation, is people in town before there was a community cable channel. People did without because they didn't know. But now that it's been existing, and then we added the second channel, and now we added the third channel, all of you know when you go to events, there's a lot of people watching these channels at all different times for all different reasons. And if that scales back because we can't support it, there will be an outcry that, hey, listen, you know, this was, some, this was important to me. You know, a lot of people had no visibility into public meetings, for instance, or school events or anything of that ilk before there was you know, before there was PAC. And that has grown, and we've gotten the support of the townspeople over time. So there is that trade-off. Yeah, it may increase rates to a certain degree, and I think it'll also be taxing, you know, assessing people like Verizon, who, who in this town hasn't been assessed. So I think people will see the benefit of it. By chance, do you have the actual le legislation in front of you? You have it in front of you. Uh -uh. Pending legislation. 
Oh, do you have it there? We do. You're, you're welcome to these, otherwise I just have to take them No, no, we, ha we, have, them we have them. We have them on our drive. Any other questions for Mr. Walker? No questions. I want to thank you for coming tonight. And you're welcome. For representing, thank you. First of all, explaining that very well <laughs> and for, for all your work in the pack. I really thank appreciate you. that. When is um, when do these letters need to make it to committee by? Well, they're in committee right now, yep. so they're, they're in committee, and we do not have address uh, dates. Right, but we're expecting it to be so very I soon. So I am more than, I, I am very cognizant of the fact, and and I will say one thing: I, I you know it's very rare, and I don't see it being likely tonight, with no deadline that we would be introduced to something and then approve it in the same evening. So That's fine. I, if your request or the way you're implying that you would like a week, I certainly understand that and would support that, that we should take a week now that we know what it is to read it before we sign the letters. Yeah. But feel free to sign it anyway. Yes, well, we, we will feel free to sign it. We just won't. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right, so we will put that back on. So please can read whatever you need to read between then and uh, now and next week, and then we will take it up as a vote next week. 725, a meeting with the Historical Commission uh, regarding the demo delay uh, bylaw amendment article for the special town meeting. Mr. McGrath, welcome. Good evening. Okay, so you have submitted to us, and everybody should have received uh, the amended article from the Historical Commission. And so if you want to, if you want to just, for those people at home, review what you've modified since the uh, first draft of the article was sent to us, uh, and then, then we can take the discussion from there. Okay, so we've put in the, uh, during the delay period by the applicant, the historical commission, by means of submitting the document entitled demolition Delay by monthly report as a bi monthly on it as a, on a bi monthly basis beginning with the first day of the second month following the imposition of the demolition delay. <coughs> this is to engage the applicant with the commission. Uh, previously, uh, they filled out an application and then we didn't hear from them uh, till the end of the process. Uh, often we had to try to track them down to find out what was going on. Um, so this uh, solidifies the, the situation where we're in touch with them, they're in touch with us. Okay. We're requesting that uh, an estimate, it was said an estimate for moving the building or structure was required uh, as showing an attempt to uh, try to save the building we're adding in its present condition. Um, there's been a problem with uh, people applying and then just leaving the properties and, and uh, they get badly damaged in the uh, time between they fill out an application and the end of the process. Um, so we'd like to uh, put that in to uh, try to preserve the building in its present condition uh, till the end of the process um, where it would be uh, saved or demolished according to uh, uh, what happened in between, if they met all the requirements for the demolition delay, uh, then the application would go through for, uh, for demolition. We uh, put in any owner failing to submit the bi-monthly report on the prescribed schedule shall have the Demolition delay period extended one day for each day of delay in filing. Um, so we uh, took your suggestion that uh, time is a more effective uh, deterrent uh, to get people to comply than a, a financial penalty. We've added at any time during the delay period, the historical commission may advise the building commissioner in writing to issue a demolition permit without 
waiting for the period to expire. If the commission decides that there is not a reasonable, there is not a reasonable likelihood that any entity is willing to purchase, preserve, rehabilitate, or restore, or move said structure. We wanted to add that for at least six months, the owner has made continuing bona fide and reasonable efforts to locate a purchaser to preserve, rehabilitate, restore, remove the subject structure and that such effort efforts have been unsuccessful. So this gives us the uh, flexibility if for some reason the building is uh, in bad shape, but it's historic uh, and it's obvious that uh, they're not going to be able to sell it or move it. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to uh, allow it to be demoed uh, before the time period is up. Um, under the uh, emergency demolition, it says that the uh, building commissioner or the chief uh, can er order the uh, demolition of the building. If it's a hazard, uh, we wanted to add that the appropriate commission shall be promptly notified of the decision. In the past, uh, buildings have just been uh, torn down. We've never notif uh, been notified, so we drive by and it's gone. We had no reason. Uh, we didn't understand why. So this uh, increase, all this increases the communication between applicant and uh, town officials. I can think of a couple of them happened to that for sure. I have a question for you. Yes. Because uh, it says the appropriate commission. So this demo delay bylaw is outside of the village district applied by the historical commission. Is that correct? Uh, yes. But inside the 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 village district, it's applied. The same exact bylaw is applied by the APDC. Is that correct? correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's why that says that. Uh, I'll open it up to the board if anybody has any questions. Mr. Chair, thank Mr. you. Mr. Franco. Um, first of all, I want to say that I noted the substantial revisions and uh, uh, they overcame all of the major concerns that I had previously articulated. So thank you for that. Uh, I do have a couple quick questions, though. With, between A and B under 4, uh, it's unclear based on the way that's drafted. Is, that, is there an or between A and B, or is it an and? In other words, is it if one of those uh, decisions is made A or B, or both? Uh, it would be both. So you may want to include that. And so probably somewhere in before the before the colon, if the commission decides that both of the following are true, e either, or something of like that, either that or a comma or semicolon at the end of a and the word and. Yeah, I'm afraid that the and would get lost. In the formatting, that's my only concern. I, it would work, but I, I, it's generally not done that way because I think okay. the single trailing and may get lost. Okay. So, how do you think it should read? I mean, I'd just give a suggestion. I think town council would probably be best, but yeah. So it says in writing to issue a demolition delay without waiting for the period to expire if the commission decides that uh, these two conditions are met. Let's say or that these conditions are all met. Yeah, that's what I would say. These conditions are all met. That way you can add a C later on and you don't have to change the wording again. I th doesn't it? Uh... Right now, Mr. Franco's question is very on point. Right now it reads that it doesn't say whether A and B are exclusive or inclusive, that mm -hmm. both of them have to be true or only one of them has to be true. Or, or conjunctive and disjunctive, really. So the yes. uh, is it <laughs> that's why he gets big bucks. The lettering, 
A and B is the problem? No, no. It, it all should be as one? No, it's the, the fact that there's no implied and or or currently. I, I think, when, to Mr. McGrath, to your, to your point, if you were to combine them, you'd resolve the yeah. concern. And if you do what combine them. What do you mean combine them? They're two separate, they're, they're two separate things, two separate evaluation points. Uh, they're not the same. It, it, however, if it's, I, I, how I read this is there doesn't need to be an A and B if it's just, if it's not an or. Yeah. So it can say there's not a reason, there's a reasonable likelihood, whatever, next sentence and, or comma and for at least six months that it could be one combined statement. Well, you could certainly, yeah. I mean, so again, format, Usually it's not done this way. Usually it's done the way you have it here, but yeah. you could, in English, you could move the A up to right after the colon and you put, in a, 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 put A in parentheses and you say that whole thing and then you do what Mr. Franco said and then say and and then parentheses put B and then list it after. So you could list them in one big paragraph. Or put a semicolon after the first one. <laughs> Doesn't the... It's uh, an and or an or. So, I mean, so it says that the, the period of... Uh, it says if the commission decides that A... Da -da -da -da, and B, da -da 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 -da. It doesn't that refer to both A and B? I think so. Yeah, there's lots of ways to do this. Yeah, yeah, he's just concerned <laughs> that the <laughs> and is going to get lost. Depending but, on town council. Right, let's, let's find, as long as we know that are, your intention yeah. is and, okay? <laughs> so let's put a note in there. Yep. We, are, we already went through town council with this. So. Um, well, he had reviewed I, it. You know, it's again. He's reviewing a lot of things a lot of times. It's, yeah, it's it's an easy nuance to miss, but it's an important one. I thank Mr. Franco for bringing that up because so it should go good. back to town council then for review. Well, well we can, you don't have to go. We can I we can ask. Okay, right. great, thanks for that. Any other questions about substantive parts of this? Yes, I, and by the way, I could I could I could earn at least several hundred dollars fighting over something like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, remember that. <laughs> uh, I would make a similar comment with regard to number one above. Evidence shall include all of the following, A well, through D. And that was actually my question. Yeah. Um, so the way that number one reads says, uh, bona fide reasonable attempts have been made to sell, comma, preserve, comma, move, comma, rehabilitate, or restore said building or structure. Mm -hmm. So with this being a, a list, I read this to say that if you've made an attempt to sell, you satisfied the, these requirements. If you've made an attempt to preserve, if you've made an attempt to move, but or, or rehabilitate, that is, this is not an all-inclusive list. It's you got to do one, at least one of these things. So the way that it reads below, I just want to make sure we have the same understanding: is that that your intent, your your understanding of this is the same as mine. That that or means one of the of these items, not all of these items. Is that a fair understanding? Well, he's not. Remember, I just want to point out that he's not, and the commission is not adding or modifying. That's already there. I I, I okay. understand. That's why I'm asking if if that's how he translates. Is that how? And is that that's D one you're referring to. I'm referring to your first one, just the number one, the very. Uh, it's I think, yes, it's D1. Bona fide yes. reasonable attempts have been made. Yeah, so yes. it says shall include. No, no, no. The sentence before that he's referring to. Yeah, where it says that bona fide reasonable attempts uh, have been made to sell, preserve, move, rehabilitate, or restore said building or structure. That if someone makes an attempt to do one of those, do you read this to mean that they've satisfied these requirements? Yes. All right. So then, so then it follows then that their report then does not need to list all four, all A, B, C, and D. It just needs to list one. Is that also your intent and your understanding? Uh, so if they're going to sell it, yeah, they list it. Uh, they wouldn't need an estimate to rehabilitate it. They wouldn't need to uh, have an estimate for moving it. it would, yeah, it encompasses the different parts of that Got it. early sentence. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all these changes, I think, that have been made also satisfy all of my very 
I think, serious concerns about the first version. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I will support these changes. Okay, thank you. I did have one other question. I just want to make sure that this is what's actually intended. I don't, uh, up in the, during the delay period, the applicant must notify the Historical Commission by means of submitting the document, da, 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 we'll call it the report, on a bi-monthly basis, beginning with the first day of the second month following the imposition of the delay. I just want to make sure that this is what's intended. That means after one month, after one month, the first day following one month yes. is what you intend. So like on the 31st day yes. following yes. a 30-day month. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. Okay. Just want to, that's fine. I just yeah. want to make We'd sure. We'd like to get uh, the process going so that they're engaged right away rather than waiting two months after the, uh, after the initial application. Yep. Uh, Understood. I, it was a clarification point and it makes total sense. Yeah. So, okay. Now this, uh, on that same that same change or modification that you're proposing, it has been noted at the uh, FinCom meeting, and I would agree with the assessment, is that it is very nebulous what bi-monthly means, whether it means every other month or it means twice a month. So you may want to change bi-monthly into something that is more specific, that no one can misconstrue what that means. So you may want to put on it every other month. That's or every second month after starting with the first day of blah, blah, blah. So again, we can ask town council to, to but bi-monthly is, is, is not a clear term. If I, if I could address that, actually. I, did, I don't even know where I heard that. What was I watching that I heard that? On oh, the oh, yeah, that's right. OK. Uh, it's when you start forgetting what you're watching. Um, I have never understood bi-monthly to mean twice a month. Semi-monthly means yeah. twice a month. No, semi-monthly would mean twice every month. two weeks. That's right. Semi-monthly means twice a month. Yeah. Right, but that, that's just two terms of the same thing. No, no, no. Uh, Bi-monthly bi means a, a couplet of okay. months. All right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I thought it made a good term, but that's okay. It, it might mean two different things. Right. I, I receive bi-monthly periodicals, so I get them every two months. Right. Yeah, I thought it was a defined term by month. Because oh, I specifically remember yelling at the monitor when I was watching it. So then. <laughs> well, that was you. We are lawyers. So I, 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 I trust you. That was. Uh, anyway, just a note. I mean, it's a minor note. I, too, am very pleased. And I think that the change that you made in, uh, in number three with the delay of the day is going to have much more effect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was so. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Twice a month or every two months. There you go. What does it say? <laughs> twice a month or every two months. Uh, right. so okay. Yeah. Yes. Good. Bi no, twice a month. What? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Leaning back like you're good. Yeah. It says exactly what I said it said, <laughs> which is it's nebulous. You're it's very put, unclear. Yeah. You're going to put all these lawyers out of business. Just leave it all confusing. How much, how much so money can do you get for this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get another hundred dollars out of this? I get paid whether I want to lose. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There you go. There's Boy, that cool. is really a, a contour. I, you know what probably happened there? That probably the same thing that happened there is probably the same thing that happened that where Marion Webster finally recognized irregardless as a word. That's what happened there. Because. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're not. Now we're gonna, yeah, we're <laughs> okay, so I'm fine. Is anybody. I don't think that we have to vote on this. I think we have a great. Well, maybe we do want to vote to make sure it's in the, it's in the warrant. Does anybody have a, any objections to this being in the warrant and having the people vote? I'm fine with the people voting on this, personally. I actually will actually support it, so. No objection. Do we need a vote? Should we have a vote? Sure. Doesn't hurt. That's, I would entertain a motion regarding the proposed modification to the demo delay bylaw as presented by the Historical Commission. Uh, so, so moved. Again. Oh, sorry. Start with I move that so we know. Yeah, yes, yes. In case by the hour, Tom. So <laughs> I, 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 I move to accept, uh, to approve uh, the inclusion of this bylaw as amended. Thank you. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. So, uh, the uh, town manager, you're going to check with town council yes. on, on that and then. Uh, We'll uh, tidy up those few words and then uh, resubmit it to you. 
Yes, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, okay. I think there's no reason for you to go back to them. I think the town manager can, no, can, can. wordsmith those last two. There's no, there's no change in intent now that we know what your intent is. Right, excellent. Good, thank you very much, Joe. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 8 and p.m. If I might, my public apology to the person that brought that up at the FinCom. I stand, <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm glad we don't have any bi-weekly meetings then. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. 8 p.m. <laughs> request of R Randy Moulton to bow hunt on 671 West Street parcel. Yes, please, sir. please come to the microphone and introduce yourself and your address, and then we can. Good evening. Uh, my name is Randy Moulton. Uh, you want my home address? Yes, please. 157 Wilder Road. It's in Lemister, Mass. Okay. I'm uh, requesting permission to archery hunt on 671 uh, West Street in Lunenburg. It's a 67 acre parcel of mostly swamp, um, some woods. It's a very specific area that I would target just a few times during the hunting season. And it's, uh, it, it meets all the requirements as far as 75 yards away from a road, um, 170 yards away from any dwelling. Um, it, it, it's plenty big enough as from the research I've done and the scouting that I've done of the area. I will open it up to the board. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, will you be hunting, do you intend to hunt from a tree stand? Um, no, mostly from the ground. Okay. I don't, I don't have, use tree stands. Sure. Um, I'm not going to support this passing today, okay. um, but I want to explain to you why. So I generally am very much so in support of hunting yes, uh, and bow hunting, hunting with rifles. Um, and I think it's a normal part of our life. I think it's a normal part of our heritage. Yes, so I, I don't hold any reservations about hunting. In fact, I think that in previous votes, I have, have always, I think, supported uh, everyone's request to hunt. So I'm not going to support this one. Uh, I think that this area, so this is a parcel of, of town land that we don't actually have any rules for. Okay. We don't have a set purpose for. Uh, so it's kind of being used by residents yes. casually for, you know, passive recreation. Uh, it's being used by, I believe, farming community to farm, you know, to bail some of the, the fields there. So it kind of has this open community use right now with no real set guidelines on how it should be used. And I don't think that we would be able to realistically inform the public that the activity is happening. Okay. So if it was land that uh, we had a way of notifying others and if it didn't have so many abutters as this land does, as you, you looked at that map, you see how many small parcels are all around this. I have no concerns about a bow errantly running into someone's house, right. uh, you know, zero. Okay. My, my concern is, again, that we will not be able to effectively communicate to all the people who use the land that the activity is occurring. I understand. Right. Um, I would ask the question, um, do we have a... I'm not going to get the terminology correct, but I was under the impression that um, Lunenburg Town land was open to archery only. Okay. No, that's only at those parcels under the care of the conservation. conservation. Okay. To which is, if I may add, to which is what my objection would be, is that I don't see any compelling reason to open, beside that I agree with what Mr. Right. Jeffries said, uh, I would add one p uh, additional piece, which is we have plenty of conservation, plenty of conservation land that's open by right to archery. And I don't see the, the need to open up another parcel, another 67 acres, when we have literally hundreds of acres that are available. By right. I understand. And um, I do take advantage of other parcels that are open to conservation. So I, uh, I, I respect that. We have other members, though, with other views. Yeah, I'll, I'll open it up if anybody has any questions or comments and of their I, own. I also will add, it is it is very specific. Um, on that parcel, the 67 acres is not, there's there's no um, fields. It, it's all either wooded or swamped, and it's, it is directly the edge of the swamp that I would be focusing on. So there, 
as far as the trails going through it, I would be well um, away from all those areas. So. Um. Fair enough. Anybody else have any questions, so, comments? So you are aware that bow hunting's allowed on all conservation lands according to their policies? Yes, sir. You're aware of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. I personally have no objection to the request. I, I came prepared to uh, support to say it was okay as well, but uh, I I understand Mr. Jeffries's points, and now I'm in the same on the same page. So uh, I will not support it. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other questions, then I will entertain a motion. Any motion that. Uh, addresses the request by Mr. Moulton to bow hunt on 671 West Street parcel. I move to deny the request from Mr. Moulton to bow hunt on 671 West Street. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Read it. So three to two, it passes, so the request is denied. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, interviews, appointments, reappointments, resignation. So we have an APDC resident representative, term to expire June 30th, 2024. Uh, Laura McGrath at 22 Cushing Lane. Good evening. Good evening. So again, just introduce yourself, even though I've already given your name and address. Okay. I've taken all that thunder. My name is Laura McGrath. I reside at 22 Cushing Lane, Lunenburg, Mass. And I'll start out the way I start out all. So tell us why you want to be a member of the Architectural <laughs> Preservation District well, Committee. Okay, so I am a middle school social studies teacher. I've been teaching in a neighboring community for over 35 years, I teach in Lemonster. And um, so I believe in preserving the past as a way to protect our history for the future. Um, I also, d during COVID, was, um, was watching involved, you know, watching, standing by as the APDC meetings were taking place. And I felt oftentimes that I wanted to say something. And because I missed public comments, I could not speak. And um, I just think that, um, that I probably have quite a bit that I could say and share and contribute to the, commun to the committee and um, would like the opportunity to be able to sit at the table and um, and share my thoughts and my ideas and be an active participant in the committee. You know, I have, um, yeah, so that would be it. And also, as I watch the select board meetings, um, every month you talk about how the committee needs two, new, two more members. So I kind of figured that it might be time to, you know, break out and participate in a community um, committee which I have not done prior to this, you know. Anything. Now, n anything, yeah, in Lunenburg. So now I'm an empty nester and I spend too much time trying to, you know, communicate with my adult children and spend too much time probably with my school children. So this would be a nice opportunity for me to do something a little bit different after all this time. Okay, thank you. I would open it up to the board. So any questions? So you want to stop text, texting and get down to business? Pardon me? <laughs> so I you want to stop texting and get down to business, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would just say that the only thing that, I guess, uh, I, and I, and this isn't a personal thing at all because I... Right. Your husband shows a great degree of integrity every time he presents himself. Uh, right. 
publicly, and you seem to as well. Well, I was, yeah, I was going to say, I, I have, there's like no hidden agenda. No, I'm and, sure there um, isn't, but yeah. I, I, I always worry about the nepotism thing, you know, the, you know, the husband and wife uh, on the same committee. That's just uh, something I'm always concerned about. Um, okay. You know, we tried to shy away from that in law enforcement um, for obvious reasons, too. Okay. Um, so that, 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 that's my only concern. It has nothing to do with you or Mr. Right. McGrath at all. Um, at all. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, <coughs> well, I appreciate your comments. I don't think we have a lot of candidates beating down our door to uh, join the APDC, so I, I welcome any volunteers, um, and I, I think you'd be a fine. Well, I, I was going to say part, you know, part of it is that during the time of COVID, when the meetings were Zoom, um, there were only three members, and sometimes if somebody wasn't able to make it, then they didn't have a quorum, and I would think to myself. I could make the quorum, you know, I could give you the quorum that you need. I, um, you know, sometimes go to the meetings and sit on the sideline and I see Cullen taking down the minutes of the meeting and stuff. And I think that's definitely something that, you know, that I can do in a way that I can contribute to kind of alleviate all of the work that the three men are doing. Um, as well as be able to speak when I want to speak. And anyone who knows me knows that it's very difficult for me to not ask questions and um, to refrain from making comments when I see fit but, um, or when I want to. But, um, but I, do, I do appreciate that, that concern that you have. But like I said, there's, there's absolutely no hidden agenda. And anyone who knows my husband and I know that if opposites attract, then we're the epitome of that. <laughs> so that, um, you know, I definitely speak my mind, and um, I'm certainly anything but a puppet. So. Um, first of all, thank you for stepping forward. There, there is a dearth of volunteers in town, so I always appreciate when people stand up uh, to do this. Unfortunately, I, I, um, I serve on a board of trustees for a private school, and I am the chair on that board of something called the governance committee which is the committee that gets to decide who gets to be trustees and who doesn't yeah. um and we have a strict rule against people from the same household spouses etc being uh, two, two members like that serving on the board or any committee of the board and i am so uh, supportive of the rationale for that mm -hmm. that i I think you'd be a stellar candidate otherwise. I, that is going to be my hang-up here. And for that reason and that reason only, I, it's not just what goes on in the dynamic of your own household. It's also the precedent. Okay. So even if you disagree on issues or you see things different ways, uh, uh, it's the precedent that we send out to the public that, well, you let them do it. So why okay. can't we do it? So that's my concern. But I, I, it pains me to... to to go the way I'm going, because uh, I think you'd be a great candidate, but I just, for that reason, can't, can't Okay, go. sure, I respect that. Yeah, so <clears throat> I've seen you walk by the camera in some APDC meetings. Yeah. So it's a nice, it's a pleasure to actually meet you. Um, and as you know, we've interacted with, your, with um, Mr. McGrath quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I've said in a previous meeting, I don't know, probably two years ago, uh, the same thing that two of my fellow colleagues are saying here tonight that I generally am opposed to members of the same household serving on the same committee. And it has nothing to do with qualifications. You certainly seem like you are an excellent candidate. I think that my concern is about perception and what happens on the other end of the table when you have multiple names that are similar and how that reads. Okay. Um, and, and beyond that, it's, it's also, I think, you know, on the applicant side, um, it's, it's the perception of fairness that mm -hmm. while I don't think that there's anything that you or, or um, your other half, that there's any indication that anything that you would do would ever be unfair, uh, I think that we have to be concerned about perception as well. And I think that there's a perception concern that I have, and that's why I've consistently been opposed to members of the same household, not, I mean, sisters, brothers, you know, anyone okay. serving together on the same committee. Sure. 
So I apologize for that because I understand that uh, the implications of that. But okay. But I do appreciate you stepping forward. All right. Well, thank you. I, I too. I mean, I actually okay. have a long history of. There have been times when, when people of the same household, uh, spouses or otherwise, have come before me, and I, I, I never support them out of okay. the same principles that were spoken. All right. By previous. What I would, what I, now. Yes. That's being said. Yes. I don't want to lose a volunteer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of other committees that need people, that we need people. I'm hoping. Okay, this is my hope, is that of those, there is something in there that engages you in at least a similar way, maybe not to the same level, but to some similar way, okay. that we can use your enthusiasm and your wanting to be involved in town in one of the other things that, is, what do we have? Uh, something similar, maybe Economic Development Committee. <laughs> uh, there's a position on the Green Communities Committee. Uh, one associate vacancy in the Zoning Board of Appeals, Personnel Committee, uh, Commissioner of Trust Funds, and um, those are all the openings right now. Right. Okay. So, so I'll I'm go check it out. Too. That because I again it, it is a. Somebody said I think it pains them. It, it is a very hard decision for me to make, but I think because of president and because of principle, I think I would have to not be in favor of your placement on this because of. The current membership. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm hoping, and that's all I can do in this case, that you might be interested in one of the other things yeah. that do not offer this kind of conflict that we can still use your energies in wanting to help the town. In some okay. Way. I will check out the list and get back to you. Please. Thank do. you very much for um, your time. This is the chair. One other comment I'd yeah. like to make, Mrs. McGrath. Just sure. In the in the interest of disclosure, too. I would tell you that my oldest son uh, is a combat vet. He was a Marine Corps sniper. And when he cycled out of the Marine Corps, he came to me when I was the police chief and asked me if he could get a job as a police officer. And I had to say no. Right. And I discouraged him. And then my youngest son, um, he too came to me and asked me if he could become a police officer. And I had to say no, however. Right. He got appointed on the police department after I retired. And right. I just want you to know that, you know, we were pretty strict about that. So sure. thing. I don't want you to think I'm some kind sure. of No, no, no. And I, you know, I, well, I see in the schools, but, um, you know, usually it's like if somebody becomes a principal, then their spouse would go teach in a different building or something like that. Mm. So, you know, yeah. So I, yeah, and I too would like to thank you. I mean, a lot for stepping sure. up, and I know, and you, you'd be very valuable to the town. Believe me, and I, I really encourage you too to maybe seek a position on one or the other. Sure, you know, yeah, no, I will. Are, I'll look into them. I would, and, yeah, we uh, would appreciate that. Believe me, because I know you'd you'd be an asset to the town. Thank you. And I want you to go away from this absolutely knowing, and I I think you do. Yes. That none of this is. It's not a personal decision. Absolutely. It's not any any mark on you that we can't trust you with in the same house. It's sure. really so much just on principle and precedent. Sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank you. Good night. Can we take a formal vote on this? I hope not. <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. Town manager report. Start by listing the vacancies. There are two vacancies in the Architectural Preservation District Commission, two vacancies in the Commissioner of Trust Funds, multiple vacancies on the Economic, Economic Development Committee, one regular member vacancy and two associate vacancies on the Green Communities Committee, one vacancy in the Personnel Committee, and one associate vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Anyone interested in serving on any of those boards can submit a application form that can be found on the town website and submit completed forms to the select board's office. Current employment opportunities with the town. There is, are currently postings for the assistant accountant position, which is a part-time benefited position, a board committee clerk, which is a part-time non-benefited position, a digital services staff librarian, which is a part-time benefited 
position, assistant to the sewer business manager, which is a part-time position that they're seeking to make a benefited position at the special town meeting, trash and recycling coordinator, which is a grant-funded part-time non-benefited position. More information can be found on the website under employment opportunities. I have a long legislative update. <laughs> um, so I recently reached out to Senator Cronin, Representative Kushmerick, and Representative Sina regarding a number of questions that we've uh, broadly discussed, including any pending bills that would affect host community agreements, property tax relief legislation for seniors, any possible legislation that would impact formula funding changes related to Chapter 70 and Chapter 90, the, state, the status of the state supplemental budget bill, the state's plan for ARPA funding, and the status of the bond bills that have, been, have earmarked funds for Lunenburg. We had a Zoom call last week, and they provided the following updates. They confirmed that any bills on host community agreements will not be acted on this fiscal year, nor is there any impetus to move any forward. Senator Cronin was not aware of any bills that would adopt tax relief for seniors and did not believe the Senate had any appetite to act on such bills. The House has two bills that Rep Representative Sina co-sponsored, but they are not moving forward at this time. The legislators did not foresee any changes to the funding formulas for Chapter 70 and Chapter 90 this fiscal year, um, but Senator Cronin did note that um, did expect Chapter 90 funding formula bill in the future. The Votes Act passed in the Senate, and the House is expected to take action on this during this session. The legislators should have received the re-precincting maps this past Friday, and we'll have 21 days to review those. At the time of speaking with them, they did not know if there would be any changes to Lunenburg. Debate on the state supplemental budget bill occur will occur before November 17th, as formal session ends on the state and resumes in January. Realistically, when requesting earmarks, we should ask for projects that are between 10,000 and 50,000. Uh, given that the, we have a freshman delegation that plays a part into it. And um, I will ask and work with the chair about an upcoming agenda item to provide my recommendations for earmarks to request in the supplemental budget bill. The state is currently in the process of holding hearings on the use of ARPA funds, but are also in a holding pattern waiting for the federal government, uh, their infrastructure bill, so there's no duplication of efforts and they maximize any opportunities for funding um, with use of those funds. The, um, I also plan on putting together projects that are high priority to the town, such as the Flat Hill Culvert Project to submit to the legislature as they are formulating on how best to use state ARPA funds. In regards to the three bond bills that projects for Lunenburg were included in, the legislators were upfront that we will never see that funding. Not only do we have a freshman delegation, but there have been zero projects for small towns that funding and bond bills have been released. I plan to extract the projects that were included in these bond bills that have not been completed and add them to our list of budget priorities that will be up for discussion if they are not already. The Senate will be taking up a mental health omnibus bill between now and November 17th. This bill addresses mental health insurance reform and is not an appropriation bill. And the delegation has been invited to an upcoming meeting in November to meet with the board. And once I hear back, I will uh, let everyone know, announce that date. Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, just a comment. It, it, it's nice. It's actually a little bit refreshing that the that the delegation was upfront about the bond bills because there's always this there's always this stir that well we're in the bond bill we're in the bond bill and if they don't get funded at the outset they ain't going to get funded and to have three people in the delegation say very honestly you're never going to see that money helps us plan for what we're going to do next so we don't hold out any hope yeah 
And I've asked them when they do come to the public meeting for them to state that in person as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Budget updates. The finance director submitted the fiscal 21 balance sheet to DOR last week and free cash was certified on Friday, October 8th. The general fund free cash was certified at $2,666,962. The water enterprise retained earnings was certified at $54,544. The solid waste enterprise retained earnings was certified at $49,413 and the sewer enterprise retained earnings was certified at $1,828,706, and the PEG access enterprise retained earnings was certified at $835,969. COVID-19 update, the weekly update from the Board of Health on the total number of cases reported as of October 2nd was 80. The current positivity rate for Lunenburg as of October 2nd was 6.94%. Uh, just note on this, I spoke to um, the Board Health Today agent <coughs> about how we can promote education on this as Lunenburg seems to be an outlier compared to other communities in Massachusetts. Um, and it's really hard to determine why, given we have higher levels of vaccination uh, rates, but um, we spoke and I offered a suggestion of putting in the special town meeting warrants an informational page that we can send out and um, Mr. Graffy is going to provide that for okay. us by the deadline. Thank you. I think in what I saw today mm -hmm. from the Board of Health, our 6.94% positivity mm -hmm. rate is double what it is, more than double what it is in Worcester. And it's almost five times what it is in the state. So it's not a smidge higher. It's like really a large factor higher. Mm -hmm. So do we know how many people are getting tested? Uh, like how many people were tested to generate this number? Do we have that? I'm sure the state's dashboard has the all the breakdown on that. Okay. That's yeah, not data that the Board of Health provided okay. to me. Did you want to do your meetings and events? Yes. Um, meetings, events, and other announcements. Halloween trick-or-treat hours will be Sunday, October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. And the fall special town meeting will be Tuesday, November 16th, 2021 at 7 p.m. at the Middle School High School Auditorium. I just also want to read um, two uh, letters that we received just to acknowledge departments um, that these letters were about. Um, the deep, this email was directed to the DPW director and I was CC'd on it. Mr. Oliva, I am a relatively new resident in the town of Lunenburg, having moved into a new home on Valley Road in June 2020. I want to acknowledge your department's prompt response to my recent request to have the brush cut back on Gilcrest and Valley Road. My spouse and I walk daily on these roads and re removing the vegetation has made our exercising safer and more enjoyable to do. I also want to say that the road conditions in Lunenburg surpass those of adjacent communities. You've done a fantastic job of providing smooth pothole free roads throughout the town. I don't see a need, I don't need to see the boundary signs announcing that I am entering or leaving Lunenburg. The road conditions say it all. I have copied the town manager on this email so she is aware of your good work. By the way of this email, I also want to, her to know that your department could use a bigger brush mower. Having served as a park commissioner in Greene County, Ohio, I am very familiar with the brush mowers as we had an extensive, uh, we had an extensive rails to trails network. Keeping vegetation under control on those paved trails was never ending task, which dictated a large piece of equipment. Given Lunenburg's rural setting, it seems to me that it would make your department more efficient if it had a bigger mower. I know that budgets are always tight, but hopefully the town could plan to get this equipment sometime in the next couple of years. And that's from Tony Skulkumbreen mm -hmm. <laughs> at Five Valley Road. Skulkumbreen? Yeah, Skulkumbreen. Skulkumbreen. So I just want to acknowledge that uh, DPW uh, and their hard work. This um, we received today and it was addressed to the members of the select board and I won't, um, uh, due to
privacy concerns. I won't uh, say the person's name. I just want to let you know that the ambulance crew I worked with on Friday morning, October 8th, were absolutely wonderful. They transported me to the Neshoba Valley Medical Center. We only uh, need to remember where, um, I'll skip over, Greg from Lunenburg and Daniel from Lemonster, the paramedics. The whole team was so professional and kind. They were gentle and compassionate. I felt so safe under their care. They got here to my home in record time. I couldn't believe how quickly they responded. We in, we in Lunenburg are so fortunate to have such a wonderful crew. I just felt I wanted you to know that I had such a great experience at such a stressful and difficult time. Even one of Lunenburg's policemen was here in exact 30 seconds. He was at the side of the road by a property and heard the ambulance call and came to the door immediately. That was a really quick response. So just want to thank both of those departments as well. And to that, to that writer, I want to say, yes, I believe, I agree with you. We are lucky <laughs> having, you know, the, the, the services of the, both public safety departments and the DPW and all the people in town, I think, you know, there's a lot of times we gloss over it, but I will take this opportunity that you read these letters that I think we have an excellent group of people who work for the town. And uh, it's nice to hear that other people through various means, letters, posts, et cetera, think the same thing. So I appreciate their correspondences. I think they need a raise. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for your report. Any other questions for the town manager? I just had a comment. I mean, I think we've touched on this point before. With regard to that COVID positivity rate, I mean, we don't really know what's driving this in, our, in the comparative towns. Like, for example, if you look at Worcester, we don't know if they're just administering on a regular basis a huge number of tests. Uh, and they're coming out negative, which, you know, so their denominator in that fraction, posit positives over how many tests are administered, their denominator in that fraction is going to be huge. And it's going to make that percentage positivity rate look very small. Whereas maybe people in Lunenburg are only getting tested if they suspect they have it. So, so first of all, I have to acknowledge that your analysis is correct, right? That is certainly a possibility. I would also say that the positivity rate hasn't always been that high. So they're judging the same, all the, all the municipalities the same way, and they have been doing it pretty much the same way since they established the criteria, which is well over a year ago, and we haven't been always at that rate. So while I acknowledge that that may be a possibility, that maybe our testing has really waned, um, I think it's at least a good precaution to bring people aware of it. I mean, sure. if everybody individually says, hey, I take the precautions I need to, and they hear the message and they, they say, oh, we're doing what we can, then fine, I, I'm fine with that. I just want people to know that the state has it flagged as, as a high positivity rate. That's sure, it. yeah, no. That's... Okay, uh, old Mr. business. Mr. Chair, before yes, I move Mr. on, can I, can I just make one comment regarding the uh, uh, candidate for the APDC? Sure. So everyone was here and, and said they and I understand that they uh, don't want to set a precedent for nepotism and all that. And one of the, one of the comments I, I got via text was, we already have that precedent in town. We have a board member of the Council on Aging with a uh, married couple on there, and the sky hasn't fallen. And, and you know, uh, uh, by all accounts, they all do a great job. And one of them was reappointed this year with no objection. So I guess I'm a little puzzled why, when we have a volunteer like that on the committee that is, you know, why we'd object now. So that's all. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is that a discussion or is that just a comment? It's a comment. Obviously, he said it's a comment. If you want to comment back, you know, feel free. Yeah, I, th I think the Council of Aging is a, is a little different because I, th I think that board has like 12 people on it or, or something to that nature. Mm -hmm. But generally, I, you know, I think I've been pretty consistent in, in, in my perspective on it, but I do understand what you're saying. Uh, I think that there, are, there can be special occasions in which exceptions need to be made on a 12 so member board, but I think that my, pers you know, Council of Aging isn't making decisions about people's homes that's gonna cost them any money. 
I mean, it's, it's about providing a service to the community. And so on a board that has authority to make decisions uh, that impact people, I, I, you know, I, I would make perhaps a distinction there. That advisory boards or, or boards that don't um, regulate, you know, that the impact is not there. But I understand what you're saying. Old business, discussion of the FY22 select board goal on the primary school property and the timeline for request for demolition. So I, uh, at last week's meeting, I uh, told the board that in a separate email from the chair of the uh, APDC that it was noted that the commission had decided or had come to a consensus that they didn't think that a compromise of part of the building being kept as part of the overall design uh, of whatever's proposed at the old primary school was going to be sufficient. And I was asked by this board to make sure that was that the, his own opinion or was it the, the, the position of the commission? I did forward his response to everybody. You saw that it was the commission's uh, consensus. Mm -hmm. He didn't say unanimous, but uh, so I don't know that it is unanimous or not, but it's certainly the consensus of, of his commission that anything short of rehabilitation or sale or something of that nature that, that the idea that we, that we presented or that we offered that we could investigate of keeping a fragment of the building or part of the building as uh, a memorial to the building itself without tearing the entire thing down, that that wasn't going to be something they could vote positively about. So I just wanted to present that piece of the information that was asked last week. So everybody's had a chance to think about this, about what we want to do. The, I guess the request is that do we want to propose submitting this now? Or what are the pros and cons of submitting it now or not now? And so I'll open up the floor to anybody who wants to offer I don't, I don't see why we wouldn't submit it now. Unless we can come up with an argument why we should wait. I concur. Um, I, I think it's, I mean, I, I understand what they're doing, I guess. That's the way they're interpreting their charge, but I really wish there could have been some sort of compromise uh, uh, vision, but if it's a, if it's we're going to deal in complete binary and it's uh, total refurbishment and restoration of the building or demolition, I I say let's submit the, the demolition request. I'm in favor of submitting the demolition request as soon as possible. If we have the application here tonight, I'll fill it out. I'm in the same boat as Michael Ray, completely. I, I concur with all of you. I think it's a unanimous decision. I will say that I am going to, because uh, we have the RFP responses, that when we get to the point of whoever we hire, I am going to invite them uh, not to lose the opportunity of them to change their mind. But I think that at this point, I think it is prudent that we go ahead and, and at least begin the process. And whether it gets approved or denied, we can make what decision we want to do at that time, but at least we should start the process. So we should look at what we need to do mm -hmm. to fill, to start that process. I think it's just a form. Okay. But, um, it's, you going to take a vote on this or no? Yes, we can take a vote. So. I did have one question if I could first. Yeah. It, nothing, it just because they don't approve, I mean, nothing precludes our, uh, you know, just because they uh, didn't, um, we're submitting this demolition request yep. and it's an all or nothing thing, nothing precludes in the future some plan that. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. So, no, no, that's yeah. Not. We're, we're not shutting a door. Yeah. We're basically starting a process that everybody sees at some level is going to involve the, the partial or complete or complete demolition of that building. Yes. Okay. So either way, if we were to, to propose something, even if they were amenable to it, we'd still have to propose demolishing some of the building. So yes. I think we can get that moving forward. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion regarding the submission of the 
a request for demolition of the building at the uh, known as the old primary school on School Street. Yeah, I move for the select board to submit a request for demolition of the old primary school uh, within the next uh, 15 days. Second. Okay. okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Okay, discussion on the November 16th special town meeting warrant articles. So what do we have to, first of all, what, what is waiting for us on this? Right. I have the draft articles. So what, let's go down the list here in the. Is it possible, town manager, to uh, share this with those at home? I got a comment last week that they, someone at home couldn't follow along. Okay, the warrant itself? Yes. The draft warrant, yes. Mm -hmm. And next week we're going to take, our, that's the last meeting we have before printing, right? So next week we're yes. going to vote, be prepared. We're not going to do it tonight, but be prepared to vote on recommendations next week. Show this on pack. Yep. The shark. Okay. All right. So A. Let's just go through them. You know, and whatever we need to discuss. So the A is FY22 budget, right? Yes. Um, so there's nothing for us to talk about here. We know there's going to be numbers. I did provide a draft tonight. Um, and it's still, um, I'd like to review it with a finance director tomorrow, but it's preliminary draft on. Is there um, something you want to share with us tonight to review, or do you want to wait till next week? It is in the Google Drive, I think. Oops. Yeah, it says chart of changes. Okay, so you're saying there, but what is it in chart of changes? Okay, so article, draft article A, we have budget adjustments in draft format in our Google Drive called chart of changes. So Article A um, will include the additional funds needed for the assistant town accountant position, um, and that's $4,912. The technology department uh, will need additional costs to cover the software and equipment upgrades that the grant is not received. Um, and the cost, uh, it's a minimal cost for the consultant for the remainder of the year. That total is 65,352. And uh, our Medicare account, uh, we have the last couple of years uh, had to do uh, transfers at the end of, year, end of the year from the group health insurance. So being proactive, uh, that once that brought, was brought to my attention, um, that amount or estimating the 39,900. 35 and so there's it would be a transfer from the group health insurance insurance account to cover um, 78,500 out of those cost and the remainder would be uh, covered by raise and appropriation article 2 the prior year expense is seven thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and seventy cents you know what that is yeah, there are prior year bills from the technology department that were not 
Um, that's no, a high number for prior year bills. <laughs> yes. Usually it's in the hundreds, not yes. the thousands. They were uh, recently brought to the attention of uh, the finance director. Okay. So they were not um, known at the time or encumbrances could prior, have been made. Yeah, prior year bills are what, nine tenths we have to have a vote? Yes. And the rest of the adjustments just show the changes in the state assessments and the cherry sheet, the new growth, uh, and the sewer enterprise, both on the expenditure side and the revenue side, the changes in their budget that will be under separate articles. I'm really glad we brought up the 20 cents from the <laughs> annual town meeting revenue surplus. Yes. Put us over the top. All right. Okay. And, um, All right. So we'll vote on that next week because this is a draft. Yes. So anyway, this is the preview of this is the trailer for next week. Yes. Okay. Uh, Article D, the um, estimated amount, um, the impact to the overlay is seven thousand five hundred, and after talking with the finance director, um, she does not believe that the overlay amount that we put in the budget needs to be increased. So there's no budgetary impact. Okay. Then there's the easement on Lemister Shirley Road, which is yep. the Lunenburg Central, right? Yes. Okay, so. Who's, who's did the select board submit that? Yes, that, would, that, that will say select board. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, then we have sewer commission that's Raise appropriate borrow or transfer. Yes, Article F is to amend their budget to for additional hours and to make the position benefited for the assistant to the sewer business manager. Okay. The yet to be advertised or filled position, or do we have some? It's um, advertised at the current what's currently approved budget, not at what we are asking for town meeting at the special. And Article G is um, their annual article that they put money into the sewer capital reserve stabilization fund. Okay. H is what we just reviewed with the historical commission already tonight, this evening. Yes. I is the salary admin plan. Yep, these are positions that were approved by the personnel committee already to be um, incorporated into the Comp and class plan, and this, so this is memorializing it. Okay. The town meeting vote. J is the first of the three TC building design TCP building design committee. This one is to basically hear an interim report. Uh, K is about uh, a debt exclusion article regarding the renovation of the building as determined by the TCP Building Design Committee and their study with the architects and engineers last year. I, no, I was just gonna add that um, the Finance Committee added, asked for specific information on that related to the debt schedule and impact. Yep. So that will be presented on Thursday evening. Right. Um, if available prior to that, send it prior. So just to preempt my committee report, uh, I attended the, or remotely attended, the finance committee on last Thursday when they got to this. And they, like everybody else, um, said that clearly K and L are linked. And it was discussed whether, again, there's enough information coming from the new study that was added in this special uh, on the annual town meeting to look at what new construction would be to even make a determination that that K it was pointed out could have been on the annual town meeting there was no reason why it couldn't have been on it but we wanted to delay it because we wanted to have people have access to numbers of what it would cost now my understanding and, and mr. Jeffries is a member of the committee my understanding from the Finance Committee discussion was that the TCP Building Design Committee got word from the engineers that they're not going to have a number until November. If that's true, then that will give us not six weeks, it will give us a week and a half or two weeks to discuss something that's brand new. And so 
again, I would reiterate my objection to this on this, that there's just not going to be any time to talk about this uh, and come up with any reasonable comparison. And uh, if, the, if the, the safety valve that some of the members of this board said we could do a town meeting, I'd say, why do we want to have the, the, the finance committee spend time on this, have people prepare for this, if we're going to get there and potentially not have enough information, they're going to pass, vote to pass over it. So, uh, so I mean, I, I have a couple of thoughts. First is I don't know if it's helpful to, to relitigate things that we've already voted four to one for. Um, but when it comes to K, you know, we already have, which is what we're talking about, right? Uh, K already has a dollar amount. And, and let me rephrase that. Um, K, K has a dollar amount that we were able, K is an article to fund a rehabilitation of the TC Passios. We have that dollar amount in the spring. That dollar amount hasn't changed to now. So that's accurate for K. Now when it comes to L, L is not looking to fund a new building. Uh, L is looking for funds to get construction documents. So. I would I would clarify that we already have the number that they're looking for for K, and we have an estimate roughly of what we're, of what L is going to cost. We're plugging in two hundred fifty thousand as a working number, um, but that's what we're looking for now. When it comes to the cost of the building project, I don't fully understand why a new build would be vetted by the finance committee if that's not being proposed to the town that I would think that what the Finance Committee would concern themselves with is the financial impact of what's actually in front of the town, uh, which is funding for construction documents. That there is going to be a conversation uh, that needs to be had, and, I, and I'm not going to say that the Finance Committee is not fair in wanting to have additional information, uh, but I think that my expectation is that we'll hear a report from the Finance Committee on the impact of $250,000 from free cash to fund this, not the impact of a $23 million building project that may come in the springtime. Uh, well, first of all, to point number one about relitigating, there is the ability to always, you know, reconsider any decision that's made. So that yeah. it's not inappropriate to even offer the idea that we could possibly reconsider. No, uh, B, to the, your last point about the Finance Committee, the Finance Committee is going to be asked to provide town meeting with a recommendation on an article of not only some monetary value, but a high monetary value in the terms of uh, $23 million. And one of the pieces that's going to be part of that is the discussion at the annual town meeting that we want to know what it's going to cost to do something similar, of this similar footprint of new construction a number that's still not known and won't be known until two weeks before. That means there'll be zero time to discuss this. So unless people want to have a very, very lengthy discussion of a, 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 warrant, or a warrant that has uh, 20, some almost 20 articles, I just don't think town meeting is the time to have those discussions. I may still be in the minority. I'm just offering that as a, a point of reference that when we met and we heard from the TC Building Design Committee last week, they said they'd have it to us. I said, even if you gave it to us now, it was going to be six weeks. And they said, no, it's in a couple of weeks. Now, it's not going to be till beginning of November. Well, uh, uh, to clarify that, so w since I haven't given that committee report, so w what we discussed with the architects was that we have a 60-day contract that's with them. And the expectation is that all the information would be completed within 60 days. Now, there was a lengthy negotiation process. That contract was not signed until... I believe it was the beginning of September, end of, end, of, end of August. And so our 60 days is coming up somewhere around the end of October. So the commitment that we have from the architects is that we should expect to get a number from them between the 27th of October for discussion at our November 3rd uh, meeting, which is on uh, Wednesday. So, I mean, I, I know it's, it's half of one and, you know, six of one, half the other, but... I mean, it's it's yes, it will come out. This number will come out toward the end of uh, toward the end of October. We should have it for discussion at our November second meeting, and that is two weeks before a town meeting, which is you know not without precedent. Okay. Yeah, just add one, one more piece to that. 
Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street, also a member of the TC Passios Committee. Uh, the other thing is uh, also a member of Finance Committee. Uh, we've also, the Finance Committee has scheduled a tentative, no, an actual date for an additional public hearing on whatever that Thursday is, the first week of November. It's either the third or fourth. So we, sh we I, again, I agree, we're, we're pushed up against uh, you know, the deadline way later than we were promised and everybody thought it was going to be a no-brainer, we'll have it in no time. Uh, I am very frustrated with that, too. I brought that information to this board and other boards that we'd have it, you know, with time to uh, disseminate the information. Um, so there will be, assuming the number comes out, by the middle of that first week in November or earlier, the Finance Committee will have a public hearing on it that first week in November, and the TC Passios Committee will have uh, another public forum uh, the next week, and then town meeting is the week after that. Yeah. Again, I offer that. Uh, my goal, as I said, is to try to get something to come of this that we don't leave ourselves with no with, uh, with, with a lots of no votes on things. And I, that's why I reiterate that. I can't bring it up for reconsideration because I was the one no vote. So in, in proper parliamentary terms, the only people who can offer to reconsider it is one of the people who voted in the majority. <clears throat> I just wanna add clarification to that too. The additional information that the Finance Committee requested has to do with the debt schedules for the renovation project as well as Turkey Hill yeah. and what that looks like up against our, uh, our debt policy yeah. and as well as uh, the effect on the tax rate, what that would mean yeah. for residents. I think that's a, that's a fair conversation. I mean, I, I've had a couple of discussions with a member of the Finance Committee and, and I sincerely do understand, I, I, I think we all share if I, I'm saying this perhaps as part of L, but I think that we share a common goal, um, which is to move forward and in a way that we can get the most buy-in uh, from the community to resolve the building situations uh, that we're in. Uh, you know, I'm of the, of the belief that we had all the information for K in the springtime as well, and that the reason for delaying it was so that way we can give the residents of our town uh, the number of a new build. So that way they can make an informed decision on, on whether or not to vote in favor of K. I mean, I'm not going to be voting in favor of K. Uh, I don't support a rehabilitation at this point, given that all indications are that a new building would cost uh, around the same. And uh, once we get that number, we'll be able to confirm it. But I did, in talking about L, I would like to um, propose some changes to this. Well, hold on. So was everybody done with K? Okay, yes. L. So in speaking about L, so L is the article um, to, to secure funding for uh, the design and engineering required to construct a new building. So uh, I sent over some language, it's in our Google Drive, it's titled Article L, uh, and it's an email. Now, when I sent the email, it did have some colors here to make it a little easier to read. Uh, on our version, it's black and white. So which, what it looks like is some kind of lighter looking font on the bottom bullet. So um, I'm not sure, Tom Manor, if you want to share this uh, with the um, all residents at home. So what, what the first bullet depicts is what the current language is, and the second bullet depicts uh, how, how the, excuse me, what the first bullet depicts is the, what I'm proposing, and what the second bullet depicts is the current language with all the modifications to get to how I'm proposing it. Um, I have not asked town uh, council to review this yet. Uh, I'm sure that when he does it, there will be probably some other additional minor changes. But I'm looking to accomplish a couple things with these changes. So the first is um, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds, uh, inserting in $250,000 uh, for the design and engineering required to construct a new building. Uh, and then this is where I inserted in Lunenburg Town Hall and Community Center. And the word that I, I modified consolidation to consolidates uh, town offices and the rest of the wording here is the same town offices school uses community space the location building and land known as the TC Passios located at 1025 Mass Ave etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, 
And then also on the verbiage of uh, and any and all incidental and related cost, cost, including but not limited to site evaluation, engineering, uh, final design services, and bid preparation for construction, or take any other action relative thereto. So what I'm hoping that these changes will accomplish are a couple of things. Uh, the first is to identify uh, the new building and, and have a working name for it of Lunenburg Town Hall and Community Center. So that's one, one goal. The second goal uh, is to put a, an insert the dollar amount for the, that uh, construction set of documents that we're looking to get. And then the other portion of this, uh, adding in the language about bid, bid preparation for construction. I would also like to offer um, with these changes uh, that this Article L is being submitted by the Select Board, not the TCP Design Committee. And so for the warrant to reflect that, right now in our notes it says submitted by TCP, but it's, it's being submitted by us. I also would offer, uh, I've been working on what this presentation should look like at town meeting and compiling, beginning the, the process of putting together that presentation. So I would ask for the board's um, agreement uh, in a couple of weeks, once I give you guys a copy of that presentation, um, board's agreement to be able to present Article L to the town at town meeting. Uh, but I would like to talk about, a, a, let me just keep going. I think that a presentation of this article needs to accomplish a, a couple of things. Um, I think that we need to, to remind the community about the work that's been done to get to the point that we're at over the last 20 years, uh, and especially since 2013. I think that we need to uh, educate the public on what the building design process uh, generally in the municipal governments looks like, uh, where we are at right now in that process. And then also to identify the needs that exist in our community and how this uh, meets those needs going forward. And, I, and, and also to, to leave open or to set the, a better expectation for what we intend to learn from this, um, namely being uh, how, you know, in addition to having those concrete building costs, but to really go from an abstract, this is what our thought is, what do you think it will cost, and transferring that over to, and here are the building systems that we're gonna be putting in, and this is what those building systems cost, and this is what the flooring material is going to be, and this is what the lighting is going to be, and, and really getting that level of detail, so that way when we get to the spring, we can have not just a educated estimate, but an actual um, cost that um, companies can, uh, well, I'm sure we would get a few people to do it, but could review and then let us know what, what they would charge to provide those kinds of services. And then from that point, I think that's how we will be at a position come the springtime to be able to give the town um, all the information that they need to be able to make a decision on whether or not to move forward with constructing uh, this new building. What concerns me is that if we do not set aside this funding now to do this and we start this process in the springtime that the building cost will be five hundred thousand dollars more and i don't see a, a real good reason why uh that's in our better interest just so i am clear the, the most important thing about there's a lot of things to think of. First of all, as, your, as far as your request to present, I guess I'd love to see what you're going to present before you're going to, you know, I'd like to know before as one member of the board we vote to say, yeah, I'd love to see what you're going to present. So that's certainly open. Uh, it doesn't have to be determined until, you know, a little bit before town meeting. Uh, but the timeline you just said, so we are November 17th, so there's December, January, February, March, April, May, six months. Exactly. Well, a little less than six months. You feel that you can get an RFP out to get this together and have full bid documents and have a building designed in six months? I, I personally don't think there's a chance in the world that you can design a 55,000 square foot building in six months. So I would, what I would say in response to that is that at town meeting that the community will will get a presentation of what that design is going to be that it's something that we've actually done in less than 60 days 
um, to get to this point. That, that, you know, what we said to the town was apples to apples and to give a concept of how you can take the current programming space, repackage it in a new building, that that task alone has already been accomplished. So what we're talking about is taking that plan and getting the details of it ironed out. So the engineering aspect of it is what this is about. Mm -hmm. And that is a, in, in, the, in the normal, you know, to remind folks at home, you know, I, I, I am in the, the property industry. I, I, you know, typically an engineering process takes about two to four weeks. Now, it can take longer. It can become an elongated process, especially now. Um, but generally speaking, uh, it's a two to four week process. Um, now, you're going to go through multiple steps. That's to get your initial engineering plan of what we think we can do. And then you're going to go through your value exercise in which you're figuring out ways in which you can save money and what are these opportunities. But that's the normal process. And, and yes, that is a reasonable goal within six months. And I think the intention is to continue to work with the uh, design and engineering company that we've been working with. I will reiterate my opinion, not a chance in this world. But not, not, with any, not with any community engagement, not with any communication to the public, not with input from the public. I just, you know, again, just the, just the RFP process alone is going to take six weeks. Just that alone. That puts us well into the new year. By the time we get that approved and we get, because we can't do anything with the money, because the articles would have to be approved by the, the state, right? Any funding? No, not that. Not this? Not okay. That. So let's just say we're okay to go the next day. Still going to take a package to put together and a, a time period of X around the holidays to get somebody to do it and to get started. So again, I, I don't even think, it's, it's not even like pushing the envelope. I think it's beyond the envelope. And then, uh, I don't want to be snarky here, but that opinion is based on multiple building buildings that I've worked with in the town of primary build, public safety building, primary school building, high school building, library, and all those projects in some way or another on multiple committees that I worked on. That was my experience. So, what's the alternative? Well, I mean, I just I want to set the expectations. I'm, again, it's not about the article. I'm just I'm, I'm we're not going to have bid things. Okay, yeah, but the alternative is it. The alternative is we do nothing, zero. Then six months goes by. Then another year goes by. This way, at least, we're moving forward with some kind of expectation, whether or not we it's realized, we're moving forward, we're doing something. That's the way I look at it. Well, Just, again, when you say we're doing something, you got to bring town meeting with you. Well, that that's our, I guess that's our job. That's your job to present it correctly so that maybe we can get town meeting behind us. And if we all support that, then maybe it'll happen, the way I look at it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to weigh in just a sure. few comments. Um, one on Article K and L, I, I agree that they, they do go hand in hand. And uh, based on, on the feedback we're getting from the TC uh, Pasios committee it appears that we're going to have numbers that allow us to you know make our evaluation of, of which one we want to support uh, in terms of keep keeping article L uh, on the special town meeting warrant I, I I support that I'd like to have the ability to, to move forward on that but to your point on timeline um, I completely agree uh, that the timeline is there's no way we're going to have construction ready documents in six months we'd be lucky to get you know construction ready documents in 12 or 18 months uh, however um, I do think allowing us to move forward to mr. Marino's point is, is uh, very valuable and if we can make that decision and move the process forward take that incremental step uh, so we can continue to make progress on that I, I fully support it uh, I will also bring out just again in my committee report that the finance committee, some members of the finance committee had a problem by using free cash as a source in a special town meeting, which again, we talked about precedent earlier, uh, many of these members when we talked about somebody's candidacy for a committee, and the finance committee, there are some members who are not going to be on board with this, and again, they're going to be advising the town meeting attendees. So 
again, as an obstacle that is an adversarial obstacle that we're putting in front of ourselves. I just want that to be clear, that the, the self-imposed deadlines are exactly that, self-imposed. There is no deadline that we are missing if we don't do these. So, I, I, You know, I, I think that the town has m many people with a lot of different ideas. And, and I think that what, what I appreciate about the process that we've gone through here is that we've really tried to incorporate as many ideas from the public as possible. Um, so that way we get to a solution that people want. I mean, you know, the reality is doing nothing is not an option. We are already using TCP as a community center. It has, it's a multi-use building that is, that, tell me, Andrew, if you had to estimate how occupied it is as far as space goes, what, what is your estimate of ocu occupied use with storage and, and actual use? I would say 80%. Yeah. So we have a 55,000 square foot building that is 80% occupied, that has a roof that is, that is in poor condition. And we, I think we made a very clear case at a previous town meeting that we can spend $9 million to have the same exact building with no changes other than improving what's already existing without any kind of modification in use. That we know that, that we're already looking at that. I, I think that me and, and many other residents in town are of the opinion that it, it's time to make things happen. And I think that we're you know, tripping over ourselves. You know, Mr. Joe Public and Mrs. Joe Public does not, does not frankly give a damn about if $250,000 is coming from free cash or not. They just don't care about that. Um, I think what Mr. Joe and Mrs. Joe Public want is they want to have a solution. And, and us tripping over ourselves and being as scared of our own shadows because we are worried that a solution that's going to meet the needs of our community, maybe the tactics are, are too quick when it's been 20 something years or 300 depending on your lens. I'm not trying to discount the perspectives of those on the finance committee. That that membership provides a valuable service to our town and, and valuable recommendations to the voting population. What I'm saying is that I think that, that nonetheless, that those, those concerns will be overcome. You know, we haven't, these votes to move this project forward in some kind of way have not been close votes. I mean, th these have not barely eked by. These have overwhelmingly passed. I think the town wants a solution. And, and this helps move in that direction. And what I have a hard time explaining is, what are, again, every six month delay here is half a million dollars. Uh, you're, you're coming up, you're, you're generating numbers, okay? There's no proof that every well, six months well, is 500,000. Uh, so what, what we have is we have escalation costs that are from the professionals we've hired, yep. who've, con who, who've identified that we're looking at a roughly 4% a year escalation cost. You know, if we, if we take a $23 million total and we do 4% of that, you know, we're almost at a million bucks. Six months is half of that, that's half a million dollars. So it's not a made up number, it's not something I'm pulling out of the air, it's a number that we've hired someone to give us, who is a professional, and that's the number they've given us. I mean, that number is predicated on the fact that you have a plan and you put it on the shelf and you pull it out and it's the same exact plan that may be, that may be applicable. But you're, coming at, uh, you're comparing against something that isn't even designed yet and then no one has agreed. So that, that's the whole point. The whole point about the new building that we're lo you're looking for funding for is no one has agreed in this town that we need 55,000 square feet. They have not agreed to that. They looked at, they approved the renovation look of the re renovation design plans because we already have the building envelope. So it made sense. But if somebody says you knock it down, nobody has agreed that we're going to build a 55,000 square foot building. Maybe it'd be higher, maybe it'd be lower. You t you're starting from scratch. So it's, it's not apples to apples when you talk about an escalation cost or an inflationary cost because the design is not the same and the things you're facing are not the same. That's all I'm saying. Are you willing to entertain a motion? I, I mean, I, I think, Mr. Chair, that that there's no motions. We're not agree. I mean, I, I'm well, fine with the there, language. There, well, there's, I, I'm proposing changes to the language. Yes, I'm, a, a, I'm fine with the changes to your language because they're necessary, right? The, build, the article can't go forward without an amount, and the other, the other changes you made are, 
are fine. They're, they're minor you know, wording changes. The most important thing is the number, which by the way is $15,000 lower than the number we, uh, we appropriated to do the plan of the renovation, right? Yes. The renovation was 265. You're proposing, to, can we do this for 250? Does anybody know if that's a reasonable number? We, we think the actual number is lower than this. Okay. Um, and, and I would expect that this, this may be a, a modification as well. Uh, once we want to confirm that I, I, I hear everything that's being said tonight you know I, I have a different opinion you know I, I my involvement as a member of this board has been to help our town resolve our building crises uh, which is what we're in and as a property professional um, you know this is I think that there's a lot of people who, who have a lot of skills and what they bring to the table uh, you know if the, if, the, if if we didn't have so much square footage already we wouldn't, we wouldn't need to maintain it. And, and I mean, you know, we can't escape, to me, we can't escape the reality that, that again, 80% of 55,000 square feet is already being used. You know, that we have this building, we have Ritter building, I mean, we have buildings with, with real needs and real concerns. And, and I, I think that the conversation has already been had. I think that there were four years spent on the best use of every single parcel in town property, that this has been thoroughly vetted and thoroughly explored. I think that, you know, so, so I, I, I think that a lot of people are, are fed up and frustrated uh, that we can't seem to find a way to move ourselves forward. We have done nothing but move forward. Now, maybe not to the speed you wanted, there has never been a time where we've just, in the last six or seven years, where we didn't have a building reuse task force, that we didn't look at and had studies done on all the buildings, not just the ones we're talking about, but all the, all the, the buildings in use in town, that we haven't had money spent. So there's been progress all along. My, what, I, what I'm saying, as somebody who's gone through multiple buildings, you know, our tactics and the tactics of how to present something and how to market something so the town meeting accepts it are not trivial. That's all I'm saying to you. And I am not using Who's scare tactics. something's trivial? Well, because you're saying things are already assumed, like we've already had that conversation. Nobody has had a conversation about a new building. Nobody. Zero people have had, except your committee, have had discussions, meaningful discussions about a new building. We've talked about it. It has been implied. We spent $50,000 at annual town meeting to get to the, the, the number that we're talking about. And the number starts a dialogue that hasn't been had. And that's all I'm warning you against. I want something to pass. Nobody wants something more to pass more than I do. I'm sure we're equally on that page. I don't want to put my feelings about getting something to move forward any higher than yours. I'm saying tactically there are ways to get people coming along with you and if you have to fight your own obstacles that you put in front of you, all I'm saying is you're not, potentially you're not helping. I'm not scaring people and I'm not afraid of my own shadow to use your own words. Believe me, I've done this long enough to know what I think needs to be done. Now you may have a different opinion on timing, that's fine. I'm just trying to point out obstacles that I think you're self-imposing and that could be critical in the assessment of where this goes. That's all I'm saying. These obstacles are no more overcome if we don't do this. So and that's what we disagree on. So, that's so, where we disagree. So, so doing, doing nothing, right? If, if we don't propose to continue to move in a forward direction, where we find ourselves come, come May of next year is with the same exact information that we have, you know, that we will have on November the 16th. And, and based on the professionals we've hired, that any future project that we plan will cost more uh, by about 4% if we start this even later. You know, 4% a year if we start this later. I, I don't, I'm having a hard time understanding what any community gain, and, and you know, as we talk about the TC, uh, the Turkey Hill Elementary School, the, the best thing we can do as a town for Turkey Hill Elementary School is to get this project behind us. So that, you know, we have to do better about focusing on the needs of now, now. You know, we've had these needs in our community for too long. And, and, we, and I think we have to stop saying process, process, and start saying, you know, we have people in our community who matter, who have needs that need to get addressed, that we have, we have people working in buildings that, that need significant work. 
We have, we have people in a building right now, right now, 40,000 square feet or so, I mean, if 80, and I'm going low on 80% of 55, but that's 40,000 plus square feet across the street in a building that needs nine to $10 million of work to stay standing. Like, that's the result of the TCP design committees, that that's something that we, we were able to conclusively identify, that if we don't want to do anything, we still got to spend $9 million. So I think, I think that the town over the last two years has heard about consolidated uses at one piece of property. And, and this is a continuation of that conversation. If the town votes no, you know, then, the, then the town votes no. And, and the town has voted no on, on many things, and that is what has gotten us to this point we are at of what are the available options. And I, I, I don't see many available options here. So I'm, I'm all ears for any solution that helps us, uh, any solution. But I, I'm not so open to all the, all the no's and nays. And you know, those are things that I think we can explain and we can help people come together on, but they're not reasons to stop. I never indicate it's not a binary thing. It's not indicating stopping. I, I, we'll, we'll stop the conversation because it's not going anywhere, and we have three members who are probably checking their news feeds at this point. So, um, <laughs> actually, I'm riveted to this conversation. So, <laughs> okay. well, too, too bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm fine with the number. I mean, the number is the number. I'm, uh, you know, I think there's going to be objections to it, but again, I, I hope you're powers of persuasion are, are well served because otherwise we are kind of nowhere, but that's fine. Well, I mean, where we are is we will find ourselves, if, if we go to town with this request now and the town says, I need to know this, I need to know that before I can make a decision, then we spend six more months putting together the information so that way they can get more information. You know, it, but it's hard to do any of that without more money. Okay, does anybody have an objection to anything on the, on the rewording of L? No, okay. No. M, this is needed for the culvert, right? Yes. All right, so I, after the last issue, there's probably a, a flyby here. Uh, the custody of the rear New Towns and Road. This is the one without a clear title? No, N is the one that was um, the parcel. Oh, it was, re was, it was improperly yes. okay, identified. Okay. So this is so correcting that's a, just that a, vote. Okay, that's correct. So the O is the one that doesn't have a clear title. Correct. Okay, so again, unless somebody can show us that we're going to have a clear title, I don't know what, what we're voting on here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be speaking with the Conservation Commission Chair? Yes. Um, so between now and next week, because next week will be the final vote on all the articles. Yep. Um, I'll speak with the conservation chair, but I will be reordering everything according to how they're normally ordered, as far as money articles up front and um, similar articles like the easements together and so forth. So for that article, um, I'll try to order it correctly so it's well I want to work yeah. with you on the ordering of these anyway yeah. so sure. all right okay uh, P is the request by the Park Commission to include Marshall Park in the sewer service area so uh, anybody have, nope there should be any objection to that being included right mm -hmm. then we have lots of this is, we have some District, uh, some changes in the last, district designations. Yeah, the last four, the planning board, yeah. and the land use director will be at the finance committee's public hearing. Can he be here next week, just in case we have a question about any of these? Um, I can ask him. Actually, he will be here. Next week, regret on another topic. Oh, okay. Uh, so th these are all planning board issues that we can hear from them. Yeah. Water supply protection district, inserting a map, and that. And T is T the last one, or do we add anything? No, T is the T last is one. Last. Oh my God. Okay, good. And T will get to T probably around eleven o'clock, maybe. 
PM. And that's just uh, some subdivision lot area definitions. Doesn't like to change. Well, yeah. Minor changes, it looks like. Yes. Minor changes to each of the articles. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions about the article? So next week, be prepared to vote recommendations on these. And you will have all the appropriate financial impacts. I'm yes. Yep. Good. Okay. All right. Discussion on evaluation of proposals of the landscape design services for 30 School Street. The town manager and the town manager's office provided us that they wanted us to go over the basic scoring criteria for each of the three submissions. Did everybody get that, number one, and did everybody do that, number two? Everybody get them? Yep. Okay. Yes. Did everybody provide a score? No. No. Okay. When do you need these by? Beside tonight, I, obviously. Um, they should be before the next meeting when the interviews will be held. So, can everybody get them by end of day Thursday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. The reference checks, just that was a question that came up. Yes, Our I asked. I, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Our office, um, uh, the assistant town manager is doing the reference checks. So. Yeah, so don't do number two. So, they didn't, have, they didn't need five of us. What tab C, I meant, is the references and reputations. We didn't have five of us calling the same people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'd be thrilled with that. Mm -hmm. Didn't I just talk to somebody there? It's just for my scoring. It's for my scorecard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to schedule those interviews, how much time do you think you need for each interview? <laughs> Between 30 and 45 minutes, at least. So. What? Do you think we need to interview all of them? I mean, I've, I've already... All of them? There's three. Yeah, but I mean, I've already eliminated one. I mean, do, do we need to... Uh, I'm sure you've eliminated <laughs> two. <laughs> like, do we... I'm right. saying, like, do, if there's a common thread here that one person's on the... I have not eliminated you, anybody. But I'm, what I'm saying is that on Thursday when we submit these things back, if yeah. there's a common thread that all of us have marked down the same person as an example, why have them come out for an interview? Our RFP says that we have to interview um, at oh. least three firms. Okay. So we only receive three bits. But that's only if you follow process. Mm -hmm. Well, having participated <laughs> in interviews uh, in the past from the interviewee side, I mean, I, I think there's some value in, in uh, allowing each of the firms to come and present because uh, many times you can see the interviews can carry some weight. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'd say at least 30 minutes, because then we tell them they have, they'll have 15 minutes to present anything they want to present, and then we'll have open it up for questions. I don't think we can limit it to less than that. I mean, I don't see how we can limit it to less than that. Okay. Not, not to get anything meaningful out of it, at least. So, so 30 minutes, 30 and I'll leave a five-minute buffer between each. Yeah. yeah. And, and mm -hmm. tell them we, we, I, I, we will hold them. I will hold them to, it has to be between their, any initial presentation they want to do, which they're allowed to do, we has to be, you know, up to 15 minutes. We're not going to go no, more than 15. Give, yeah, we'll give them that instruction. Yep. So, and I don't, as far as the order, I'll let them, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that will be according to when they're Yeah, when available. they can come. Uh, vote on the revised Massachusetts COVID-19 emergency paid sick leave policy. That is one hell of a title. <laughs> that is in our Google Drive. Yes. Has there been any changes since last time we looked at it? Uh, one, well, so there was the original policy. Right. Yeah. But we've been reviewing drafts of this, I believe, haven't no. we? Oh, okay. No. It was another this, policy? Um, okay. On September, so the original emergency paid sick leave um, legislation was, um, was supposed to end on September 30th. Well, on September 29th, the governor extended um, that law. So now extends till April 1st to 2022. And um, it added another um, option for um, for which leave may be taken 
and that's under bullet number three, under number two. You get a medical diagnosis? No, needs to obtain or recover which, from. Which, where are we going? What, what Roman numeral section are we? Is three, this purposes for which leave may be taken. Uh, okay, yeah. Number two. Oh, number two. Okay, there Bullet you go. Bullet number three. Gotcha. Needs to obtain or recover from an immune. Okay. Uh, another uh, change from the original policy was uh, the grid that um, shows uh, employees who've been on leave, who've been exposed, um, what they're required to do as far as uh, the active monitoring adds in the 14 days. So it's defined. Okay. And on the note, after the last bullet point of section four, sorry, section five, it's and was changed to and or. So okay. individuals who have had COVID in the last 90 days or who have um, received uh, full vaccination status do not need to quarantine after exposure. The Single dose of Janssen? Is that supposed to be John? No, that's the correct. That's, the, that's what it's called, the Janssen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the last two sentences are no. So that's booster shots are a newer development. Sorry, three sentences. So if you had COVID in the, in, in the last 90 days, or if you've been vaccinated. Fully vaccinated. You do not need to quarantine following exposure, like a close contact. Okay. You monitor your symptoms. Okay, I'm not a medical this professional. I just sounds straight from the state. No, no, I, I hear you, but I, it, yeah. it seems like if you if you had it, that you could. Tra I thought that was the whole per point: is that you could still transmit it even if you were not exhibiting any symptoms. It, they're saying in the last 90 days, so you you have an immunity for a period of time after having had it. Okay. I'm not a medical profession either, um, but this is verbatim from DPH. Okay. Any questions about those modifications? No. Do we need a vote? Yes. Okay. I would entertain a vote regarding the revised Massachusetts COVID-19 emergency paid sick leave policy as presented by the town manager. I move we approve the revised Massachusetts emergency COVID-19 paid sick leave policy as presented by the town manager. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Okay. Uh, next, approval of minutes of October 5th. Uh, anybody have any changes to the minutes of October 5th? No, I submitted them in advance, and they were made. Okay, excellent. Then I would entertain a motion regarding the minutes of October 5th, 2021. I move to approve the minutes of October 5th, 2021. Okay, and second. do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Warrants. Payroll warrant in the amount of $923,708.19. Uh, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of six hundred five thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and seventy six cents. And accounts payable warrant in the amount of one million two hundred sixty one thousand four hundred ninety dollars and eighty five cents. While that's going down, any action items? Um, let me check. Okay. Yes. Uh, I submitted a couple of requests to the, um, to the town manager. Um, one was just about costs. 
as, as part of my preparation for a uh, presentation to have uh, just the costs for what's been spent on the TAPE and Vertex studies as well as all uh, money that's been spent related to building plans in the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, and then the second one is on, this is new, um, speaker box over near the new crosswalk that's installed continues to ask to change password. Mm -hmm. We're aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. What is it? The uh, crosswalk oh, that was installed okay. as oh. part of Complete Streets. Well, I haven't crossed, I haven't mm -hmm. crossed the street yet by foot. So. <laughs> and thank you for the, uh, for the business card. Yep. And just a note, I did take care of the first request. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Any other ash files? Uh, committee reports. Mr. Marino. No. Mr. Dwyer. None. Mr. Franco. None. Mr. Uh, Jeffries. Yes. Uh, Council of Aging had a meeting this morning. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to make a quorum, uh, and so they did not have an official meeting. Instead, uh, we had a conversation with the members that were present for about an hour, just about different, different, you know, kind of needs and stuff. It was very off agenda. We also talked about this building project and, uh, and their support for it or not and, and what you know, we would need to do to get support for it. So it was a really good conversation. Uh, they will, they, I'm not sure if they're going to attempt to have another meeting this month or if they would just plan to meet again next month. TCP Design Committee also met uh, last week, and uh, we already talked about kind of the highlights of that discussion, which are that the timeline for these cost estimates. Um, basically, we, we worked out the, uh, the rest of the uh, programming or schematic design for the new build, uh, their, the civil engineer. Um, we also have a good layout for what the parking's gonna be. The civil engineer is going to make um, their markups to depict uh, um, properly what that the roadways would look like and then the architect is also going to just make some modifications that the board approves so it was really name changes a couple other things uh, adjacencies and they also uh, once the, that's made they will then engineer their design over the course of about two weeks and then they will have uh, cost estimates for about two more weeks uh, they're going to do what they can to expedite that process but it, it results in us getting uh, a cost estimate somewhere uh, around the 27th of November and no later than, excuse me, 27th of October and no later than the uh, 2nd of November. At our last meeting, uh, moving to the library. So the library did not meet, however, the library at the last meeting, I, I made a request on behalf of the library for additional funding related to funding a uh, position on Fridays. So the library can be open for additional hours. Based on the feedback from the meeting last week, uh, I had a conversation with uh, the library director and the chair of the library trustees, uh, and they will approach this subject uh, going into the regular uh, during the regular budgeting process next year. Uh, they would like an opportunity this year, if possible, uh, to come before the board uh, just to get a head start on getting this out there about why they're looking for this and to get that word out. Uh, also followed up with Lisa LeBlanc related to uh, a presentation to us uh, on how we can support the school curriculum, the civics requirements, now that the students have a new civics requirement that went into effect this year. Uh, and, and they're all uh, eighth graders uh, are, I believe it's eighth graders are all required to do a, a community project. And so um, tentatively, I think the 2nd of November may work best for them. Um, I did talk, reach out to the town manager for some potential dates. Um, they're, she's looking to come with a uh, curriculum specialist and with the superintendent. So that way they can be available to answer any additional questions that the board may have. And then the last is I attended a um, meeting for the Community Foundation, which is based out of uh, Fitchburg. Um, they had a meeting last Thursday that was rep attended by uh, different community leaders. Our uh, Senator Cronin was there, Ms. Mike Kushmerick, as well as the mayor of uh, Fitchburg. Uh, community Foundation just approved a $20,000 grant to the Council of Aging. Uh, that was out of a $100,000 request. And uh, so went to show my support. This, it was their 20th anniversary. Uh, and so that, that went well. And that's all I have. Excellent. Uh, I did attend the Finance Committee meeting. So there, as, as the chair of the Finance Committee noted in public comment, they're 
public hearing about the warrant is this Thursday at 7, right in this location, on Zoom and, and in person. And uh, I did mention on, on the articles that, that drew some discussion. I mentioned those to you already. And also, uh, as Mr. Passio said, that because of the late breaking numbers of when they're going to come in, they are going to need to consider a public hearing on uh, on the, these some two of those articles, or at least one of them, when the number comes in that they cannot discuss now because the number won't be ready. So that is the finance committee. And of course, you heard from the chair of the finance committee on the um, chapter 70 funding formula and policies that will be on uh, at their meeting on the 28th yes yes 28th okay um, upcoming events yes well that's the first one uh, but actually before then there, the, again the finance committee meeting this Thursday and then we are having our meeting next Tuesday and then we'll have the uh, October 28th meeting with the FinCom and I think we're meeting, uh, well, when, when is the last Monday? 26th is the last Tuesday? I mean the last Tuesday. So we're not meeting on the 26th, correct? Okay. So that's the only day we're not meeting between now and town, special town meeting. The only Tuesday we're not meeting. Any public comment from the public? Public comment from the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have an executive session. And I intend a motion to go into executive session and to adjourn after exiting executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 21, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares. It is about the fire union. So again, we will go into executive session not to return to open session. So moved. We have a second. Second. All right, roll call vote. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Franco. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an aye for me. Good night, everybody. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other until next Tuesday. Bye. All right, take a little break while they undo these. I love the fact.